Thank you very much, Slax. And one more thing just before we get into the action. We've got a, a very little special video here from Resolution. A bit of a pep talk uh, before this game begins. Let's hear what he had to say. I mean, honestly. Honestly. Like, this is what we play for, guys. We are playing for this moment. Let's enjoy every second of it. We're not gonna get many of these. Maybe six more. I mean, five more. That's what I want, but, you know. Still. Let's... There we go, some fantastic words there from Rezo, nice. smiles all around as well, very much ready Love for it. the game. We'll see how ready he is though, because uh, Tundra, they're going to find him here for this first bit of action. Trapped out by the shots, or maybe not, no, we can't quite get around, doesn't matter, no. he's going to get hooked underneath the tower, Chris gets the angle, but Saxa was the first to get that first kill, gets first blood for Saxa, but in return, Nisha will be able to pick up the kill on, onto nine there, off the back of that excellent hook for Chrysalis. Trade, but Nisha, as you mentioned, he gets the kill, so we'll get that earlier bottle for the matchup mid, and... Yeah, let's look at all these lanes, how they're going to be broken down, right? We've got the Snaking. He's been playing this Mirana time and time again throughout this tournament. Four branches, strong laning items. And we've got this the you know, this 33 begins. tied with Soxa on his Hoodwing. Something they haven't played too much as of late, but they used to play it a lot. Get a hook onto the Tide, they'll be just fine. And yeah, lots of physical damage coming out from this bottom lane. Something that I think can be sometimes deceptive. Oh, I mean, look at the niche just kind of interested in getting involved in a bit of a chase there. Ooh. And so uh, won't continue to take any more attention away from the middle lane or just be left to Chrysalis and Puppy to chase 33 down a little bit. Chrysalis, of course, having to be careful himself. As we'll see them settle here into the lane stage. Yeah, you know, we've got to sort of talk about as well. Comments there from Aoi before the game. Do you sort of like that approach? Game one of the Grand Finals. Oh, yeah. I like it. I just like to it. see if you can deal with it. You've got, you've got, no, you've got many it's, games to recover if it doesn't go great. You know, it's something that people always talk about with Puppy, right? What he does, he gives the team their heroes. If he beats it, then it's like, oh my god, you know, you kind of break a team strategy. So I think it's a really cool approach. And just looking at these lanes now, we have the Lich Pudge versus the Tide versus Hoodwink. Both of the Bottom heroes on secret starting with bringing up protections to deal with that physical damage to try to tank up because sometimes, like we mentioned, it can be a bit deceptive. Let's have a look at some of these lanes. I mean, overall, who do you have the, the biggest concerns for? Anybody going to have a specifically tough time in these early minutes? I'm looking at bottom, to be honest with you. I mean, it depends on how much damage they're able to do with this, like, gush plus this uh, acorn shot, but it's a lot of magical bursts that could sometimes trip up a tide. So, let's see if 33 is able to hold up with it. They are pretty limited on regen, also. But it tends to be, you know, the Tundra approach, not having too many tangos. They like their mangoes a lot. And this mid lane matchup in particular, you know, of course, Nine, one of the fantastic mid players to just mm -hmm. continue to bring these heroes in that nobody else will really consider playing mid. Here he is, of course, bringing out the Tusk Dyer's once coming. again in the game one of the grand finals. Up against the Nisha Leshrak, though. You've got to imagine on paper, this is not going to be too easy for the Tusk, right? He's got to be careful against Nisha. I think just because of that kill that Nisha gets, you know, the bottle being coming out so early. Otherwise, I've seen this Tusk be pretty decent in a lot of these matchups versus range. But yeah, I think Nisha, he's going to have a blast. Chrysalis is going to be okay here. Both spells on cooldown from Saxa and 33, so no further chase, but fair bit of harass, keeping Crystalis pressured underneath the tower. Starts to get easier for Secret once they get the Frost Shield levels, which they now do have, so a lot of that physical damage resistance for Crystalis. But as we've seen so many times, Tundra, this offlane, these two, they're special together. There's something about them. They even, even lane matchups, you think killed. they can't win, they sometimes end up just doing some type of crazy lane shenanigans and coming out ahead of it. So let's see how they do adapt. I mean, what are, what are some of the things that they do do so well that kind of means that they, you know, countless times, they are the duo that's just winning out in this lane? It just feels like they always know how to trade a little bit better. Either they, tr it means they either trade or they just do these constant lane pulls, shenanigans with Soxa, just re, re manipulating where the lane positioning is. So. It's just a Tundra specialty. We're seeing Top also starting to have a bit of struggle as tends to happen versus these Enigmas. The Eidolon's building up. Crystalis will be okay. Wow. I mean, that, that bottom lane really... It, it's the lane very to much, watch. It's a case of, you know, how much do Tundra try and push for that kill on the budge? Yeah. Yeah, before Chrysalis is suddenly getting buffed up and able to turn around. You know, Saxer in particular has to be very, very careful how close he gets to the budge. Up on the top lane so far. Uh, any sort of surprises here? No, not so much. I mean, the idle on spam, you know, it continues to happen whenever you are playing those carries. It's going to be affecting you a little bit. But Skeeter, he's holding his own, him snaking. They have kill threat constantly, too, the early point in net with that arrow combo. So something to look out for, especially on Zayat. But Rezo, he's always got those idle lines, so they have a lot of ways to protect and block arrow combos and stuff like that with the summons. 
Yeah, and all in all, in, in terms of the, the how good the game is for, for the Enigma, you know, how, how good is it for Rezo? Is it going to be easy for him to have impact with the Black Hole, or is this going to be one of those games where it's, it's kind of everything else about the hero that's, that's going to have its strengths? It feels like that tends to be the story for the Enigma a lot of times, but if you look at his items that he's got queued up, you know, we did mention the Wraith Pack it, comparison. He the team. Wants to go he's going to go yeah. for the Black Hole plays I mean, and just play around his Maleficent and stuns from a distance. To the Absolutely, I think it's something that we're going to be very, very happy to see. Yeah. And then it's sort of Wraith Pack rubbish, you know, we want the action, we want the Black Hole. Hey, if you look at the way the lineups can go at some point, there is going to be that lack of BKB disable, of course, for the Enigma. Sure, they're going to be able to sleep and reset and do these kind of fights that we see Tundra do a lot of times. We see a lot of teams do it with Naga Siren, but could get to some points where you have to take these fights. One lane. Oh, he lands it. Oh, oh, yeah. it. Lovely little angle there. They've got the blast as well to slow Saxo down, but because the, the creeps are pushed in, tower hits will be tanked up by the wave, so Saxo are able to walk out. And uh, Chris has definitely started showing so far. I don't think he's missed a hook, really. Every, every single one of them on, on point. So, gotta watch out for those down the road. But 33 is free. Fall. So, that lane that we were taking a look at, they've actually been able to solidify for this tight under pretty nicely with Sox's harassment. And Chris is just staying kind of low, which is a bit scary. He could constantly be getting getting on on him. We'll have that ring of health coming out to him. So, lucky to be consistently in a position where his health's a bit higher. Saxa will find himself he on top of Chrysalis. They're trying to get aggressive on towards the punch. Saxa has the stick charges at the ready. Chrysalis, he's going to get the kill before he goes down. So they push for push for the kill there on the carry. I imagine something the Tundra is going to be pretty happy with. Oh, yeah. Saxa goes down, but all according to plan, I'd imagine, there for Tundra, taking down Chrysalis. Yeah, they just have, like we said, there's just such an interesting approach to the way they do it. Even the Blades of Attack being picked up early on 33, not going for any tanky items. This is a fighting build. Phase boots right away, trying to benefit off that Blightstone, any type of minus armor they can put onto this Pudge. And it worked. Yep. And this is sort of the classic death you see at yeah. this sort of moment. from supports in that bottom lane. Me and Saxa can get over to mid, get the Bolt top back up. Voila. Definitely the sort of trades that... If you're secret, you're not going to want to allow Tundra to, to get against you anymore in this laning stage. Be a bit more careful when they make the calls to commit the kills. Up top. Not enough to chase. Catch on bottom, though. Constant aggression on these side lanes. Once again, Chrysalis trying his best to, to trade, but especially when it's 33 that's the one on top of him. Not at a point where Pudge just has enough damage to kind of bring down the tide. Tide's able to threaten them. Back up in the top jungle, Zayats is snaking. Snaking might be able one to get on this. One. Same time in the mid, Nisha. He's got a decent amount of mana to try and run down Nine. Stick charges are there, though, and Nine far enough under the tower to survive. But back in the jungle, snaking will win the battle of the supports. Oh, yeah, we see that, that stat build for Snake is really working. Nisha. Very low around this mid lane. There's a punch. As Sax has come in to try and help out with the setup. He's got a bit of a bottle charge and a fair fire. It's not enough to keep him alive, though. Nine and Saxa take him down. Saxa coming out with some top moves already from his really intentional death bottom, helping out the mid, and once again being around that mid lane, uh, around these power runes to get that, that extra bit of power that Nine needs to get a kill. And now look at bottom. That physical damage. Crystalis is too much. Bushwhack. I mean, Saxa. He's in every single bit of place that, that they need him to be. And, oh, that's a big hit, of course, with that three points and anchor smashing the, the plays of attack on top of the face boots. That's a hefty right click coming out from 33 off the back of the anchor smash. And, I mean, it's, this hoodwink, it's, it's looking kind of spooky, yeah. Fog. He's, he's all over the place and he's making big moves. And it's into, like, secret. They did the preparation, right? They had to bring the protection that to kind of try to protect versus physical. They had the frost shield, but it's not enough. This build from 33, going for that Wraith Pact, more than likely rushing it. He's gonna be able to keep his sustain down there, too. She's top lane. Yes. An what an angle. angle there for snaking, sneaking round through the trees, catches Rezo by surprise. Wow. Tundra getting kills up and down the map right now. The Eidolon's not quite enough to finish snaking off. Maybe they can still find him in the jungle, they can, and just off to the side of the lane. They will be able to take him down in return. But very much we're seeing sort of the, the support from Tundra really just enabling the, the cause already in this early landing stage, getting them that extra bit of a bonus off the back of these kills. Six to three, one K lead at the moment for Tundra. Really clever moves, really clever positioning as well too. And we're probably gonna see more of these rotations, 15 seconds until we do have that power rune coming out. So eyes on Soxa, see if he does make the rotation. Even filling up again for nice. So I want him to be as fight ready as possible. Three heroes collapsing on both sides. Trying to, to get the chance to trap him in there with the shards. Won't quite find it. We'll see eight minute power room where it's going to be. It's going to be top of oh, big one. time they'll be able to hold on to it. Nisha able to grab it. Snowball coming out the way of Zayas. Connect Only going to set up for the stun for Nisha. He's ready to run down nine. Nine has got the help for Saxa. Saxa with a bushwhack. Holds them back, but they'll still be able to run down nine. At this time, Secret, they'll bring in the extra firepower required around this mid lane. They're going to make sure that this time round, Nisha, he's not left alone. Right, there's just so much burst damage from both sides. We're going to be seeing heroes just getting popped left and right. 
But after the start of the laning phase, it's looking really nice for Tundra, even though they were up against some of these could be tougher lanes. They've done excellent versus the Naga Siren farming perfectly fine versus the Enigma. Even getting that early kill is a big deal. So Secret, they want to start getting a little more active. Early little smoke here from Nisha. Looking Feels to join Zayat and Rezo up top around this point where level six is on nine for the Enigma. Rezo. Black hole if he finds the chance to turn and use it. Nine is going to try to go for it, but Rezo he down. is ready. The six is there. Black hole comes down onto the two of them. Zayat and Nisha there in with the cleanup. Tundra, they try and make that play. And another one. Saxon has got to be careful getting himself back into the trees, back behind the tower, but Zayat, he's still sweeping Zayat's around. They may still top find top him. See how much they want to try and search. It's going to be difficult to find him. He's pretty deep, but Nisha, very resilient, continues oh, he's to go him. further and further into the trees. They'll catch him as well. Three dead on the top lane. Tundra, the ones to start that play onto resolution. It was a big risk to tech. They were really banking on the fact that he was on his own, but he wasn't. The smoke from mid, secret, they catch them by surprise. Beautiful read, really. After these last few moments, Tundra getting all these moves that are working for them, secret, they strike back. Tundra, and also, I mean, they made this move. It's not the squishiest of heroes on the Enigma. With just these two on Tundra, they need a little bit more burst, so do have to be careful. And now he gets tower. Gonna be really early blink on. Ah, uh, yeah, early tower will definitely help fuel that purchase. Already pre-10 minutes and hitting these sort of objective timings in this top lane. Now, would you imagine if, if you're Tundra, how do you sort of start to, to slow down secret speed of uh, getting control of this half of the map? It's not going to be easy. They might have to just start making moves elsewhere, maybe use the, the illusions just to scout things out, but it's not going to be easy for them to really just contest up versus Rezo now at this point. After dying once, it kind of dissuades you from really going up there until you do have like Sox having level six to have that extra beta burst damage to follow up with the Tusk. Might look to start playing around 33, I'd imagine. He's the one who's having that incredible game. I believe he has the Vlads finished. So maybe looking to start pressure this, pressuring this tower down here. Of course, he has that Ravage good to go if he sees a chance to set up for a kill on Crystalis to get some extra help. Look at the toss back onto Snake King. Doesn't stand a chance there against the amount of damage they've got. Back down bottom. Time to hold back Crystalis. He's got the Vanguard. A bit hard to commit. Ah, they try to glib for it, but does get the hook onto that. Siege. That they're bringing in a third here, and nine is around. With nine diving in, secrets full rotating. And, and Tundra, you know, they sort of learn from, from the mistake up oh, top. Yeah. They don't want to try and push for these kills too much. They know down. that secret at the moment they are in full responsive mode. It's a pretty devastating lineup to try to commit it to these kills too. And as we saw, that black hole also chain frost for the lich. It can just turn any type of these turn tides. They're being much, much more careful now. See in terms of position for Tundra, though. Leaves with that top lane here for the Mirana. Yeah, just start jungling up, Skeeter scouting out with his illusions as well. They're gonna constantly get cleaned up though, seeing Zayas do that a few times. Radiance Middle Tower. See if they're able to just attack. continue to, to to enable space for Skeeter to keep up on the Naga side. So far, so good, of course, has a, a solid 1,000 gold lead against Crystalis carrying here for Secret on the other side. Yeah, things are close. So as like as Noto and Seb were saying, you know, the pace of the game for Secret, they probably want to accelerate things a little bit more. Tundra, whenever there's these low periods, they're pretty happy oh, that they're not have. getting pressured. You're going to see if they can take down Chrysalis here with the three of them. See what sort of help he gets this time round. It doesn't look like there'll be enough to Damn save no. him as Tundra. They'll get the kill. They strike again when they know that it's still at this point where Secret, they've probably not got the TPs back up. They just don't have the methods to respond when Tundra time their aggressive moves like that. This Hoodwink seems to just be the specialty, right? This burst damage, you're getting that six now. Radiant structures are Should fortified. be able to set up for this tower, finish it off. They still have Ravage too, so the threat. Secret, attack. look like they're going to play on other side of the map. Nisha going to start hitting mid. He pretty much has the Bloodstone done. That's all net worth. Mm -hmm. Nisha. He's had many of these games where he's been at the top. And he'll have this, the whole whole match. He'll have this Bloodstone a bit attack. before the Wraith Pact is going to come out, too. So we've seen a couple times Tundra, they've counteracted this Bloodstone a lot because you just prevent how much damage it does, so you prevent how much healing. So if they do get that timing, Secret could start to take advantage of the map a little bit here. Bloodstone is done, so playing around this Lash, it's going to be problematic. Tundra might have some issues in these next few moments. They're going to have to bring the Tusk and the Hoodwink maybe in to most scenarios just to burst this Lash down. We're seeing a secret. They know how They're strong ready to is at this moment. Oh, they yeah. smoke him up, take him Radiant's anywhere on the map. It's got very they have Tundra. They'll have a very solid fight on their hands, no doubt about it. Saxa in good position. The scan catches. by the moonlight. The scan as well catches the secret rotation. So maybe unlikely now the secret are going to be able to make this a sort of jump with any sort of level of surprise. Quick turn with the bushwhack. Make sure that there's no further jump over towards Saxa. And Saxa immediately ready to turn the trap sides in the shards. Sets up for both the arrow and the sharpshooter to bang on target. Take down the kill. 
that burst from a distance. You don't really need to commit too much of anything. And now Secret, their rotation ends up not working, not getting them anything big. Does show that the Bloodstone is finished though, so I think Tundra, they're gonna keep tabs of that. Sit back, farm a little bit, wait until they have an opportunity to actually catch this Flash when he's split away from his team. And Skeeter, he's still doing fine. You know, still loving life. Things are not too problematic, even though he has that death that they had going for the Enigma. He still has pretty good timings on his items. Absolutely, yeah, he knows that when Secret try and poke at the rest of his team down there on the bottom half, this whole area of the map opens mm -hmm. back up a little bit more for him. As you can see, the wall control, it's you know, too bad at all for them. There's not any deep vision from Secret around this area, so Tundra pretty happy to, to continue to hold this area for Skeeter to keep the farm up and stay up there towards the top. Only a couple of hundred behind Nisha's farm. They've got the Wraith Pack down now, now too, so they probably can look to just fight back into this last strike. They do need to just watch out of the big ultimates that are in there too. The Lich plus that Black Hole. Just need to be careful how far they overcommit versus Secret's pretty tanky lineup. Zayats. As we've seen many times, you've got to be careful how you try and poke towards Tundra. When Nine's around, he's just <laughs> trapping you in the shards every single time you step up alone. Nisha, taste it. Got that haste rune. We'll see if he's able to chase down anything with turn. Nice little sidestep there from Nine. Make sure that he doesn't get caught out by the stun. Tundra's back under the tower, and Nisha won't be getting any kills today with this haste. Unless. I mean, they're watching him, though. I mean, they know that the haste is about to come to an end. Ooh. Again, some excellent dodges from both sides here. Last minute or so, Nisha making sure the arrow doesn't catch him by surprise. They need more heroes there. If they're going to go for some type of Ravage play, they need to go for those chain stuns if they're going to try to get Nisha. Very tanky, 1800 HP with the Bloodstone. And as you say, that that is the thing as well, though, for Tundra. If they try and play with their ult secret, they'll very they'll much be ready it. to respond with their mm -hmm. own ultimates. Both teams having huge team fight ultimates to drop. We'll see in the middle, Nisha. And just a time again, he's on his own. They have bloodstone it. charges, but they, uh, Tundra, they're just able to blow him up. A bit of a, a rare situation there where Nisha was alone. And Tundra, they make sure they don't miss out on that opportunity. And they, they make the move immediately, and, and nobody else is around for secret. No, he didn't have any help. Exactly. And they dropped the Wraith pack down. So there you see, even though he popped bloodstone, he has all this damage coming out. It's actually not that much damage, nor that much healing. No cares if they're going to commit Ravage there, it's perfect. Should be a, a free tier one tower, I'd imagine they have put the fortification. We'll see if he could try and force a fight. There's still 10 seconds, no Nisha. Look at the vision control as well, too, from Tundra. They have Ward on high ground, kind of watching everything right now. And they're back off for now, respecting the fact that Nisha is soon to be back up. But the damage certainly done to this tier one, incredibly low. Next push will take it off the map. Secret, as soon as Nisha's back in play, they might just try and find some, some sort of move around him. This time round, making sure that they're in position to enable the Lesh and not allow him to get caught out alone. That's a, the biggest thing, right? They have to start playing as much as possible around Nisha. Try to slow down Skeeter, because all these moments ticking by, this Naga Siren's just getting all the free farm in the world. Manta's finished, has an Arcane Rune, so he's going to be able to push out these lanes freely. Just keeping all these lanes shoved in, so it's hard for Seeker to really make a move yeah, without them getting caught themselves. And yeah, those deep, that deep vision, Tundra, I mean, having these deep wards that haven't been taken out is a big deal right now. 4k lead for Tundra. Very much, you say, taking over the map. And with the Moonlight Shadow. Let's see Rezo. if they can catch Rezo alone. He Rezo senses something's up there. He is squishy now. I mean, he has not built any HP items whatsoever. 1,000 HP, they have Radiant's a plethora of burst damage. This is a scary place. Tundra, they won't hesitate to dive if Nine's able to set up with the shards into the trees. He's gonna try for it, see what he can find, and he finds him. It's a perfect trap. I'll get the bushwhack in as well. Rezo getting taken down behind his tier two. Once again, Nine just continuing to be bang on target every single time with these shards. And this is pain. I mean, look at the moment, 5K gold lead now. Crystalis, he hasn't been able to find much of anything after the laning phase. They're making all the space in for Skeeter and they're getting kills out of it too. Now they need to slow Tundra down somehow or look to, to make some sort of fight happen around their own ultimates. Just set the team fight up for Nisha to be able to burn through these enemies with this incredible amount of damage he can do as the Lash. I, just, just, I mean, they're keeping all the lanes pushed in. Look, Snaking goes to the scary lane. Top, he's gonna push that one out quickly. Mid's pushed in, Radiant's bottom's pushed bottom in. Skeeter's already starting to look attack. to cut some waves. Okay, maybe suiciding some illusions, but looking to cut some waves. Yeah, the pressure anything, on the map, it's too much right now for Secret. Just getting information on who's sort of still sat back here in the base. They know that Reza's only just stepping out, so they can sort of plan for the movements of this Enigma and make sure that they're ready to, to prepare for any sort of jump Secret tries to make on them. And look, they're building more and more damage. Christmas, Christmas, he's really far. Deep. 
very far up the lane. As you can see Tundra there, a bit hesitant. They know that yeah, if he's going to play aggressive like that, chances are that the rest of Secret's there to back him up. And Secret were able to step up. As soon as they see anything, though, 33 is just knocking on a tier 2 bottom as this Tide. Getting close to his pipe as well, so all this damage mitigation for the Lesh. I mean, it, it, it's starting to get online. Yeah, the amount of pressure that Tundra can apply. Something that we've seen them always had the power to do with the, the drafts they normally answer in with. 33's tied, just being able to sit down here. Skeeter able to split the map up with his illusions. It's it's just a whole lot of everything that Secret's having to deal with right now. The tower's just continuing to get hit. 33, he just knows he's free down here because he also has that ward back up. He has Skeeter near him too. Tundra, she's playing the map beautifully. And yeah, they they build the, they got that shard early on Soxa. So that burst damage that we were talking about, they're gonna have so much of it to to take out this Lash, to take out that tanky punch. And yeah, lanes are already starting to get cut. There's already a Naga Siren problem. You're very much seeing the net worth and deep so far. Secret not really being able to use the the, the power of the punch. Now Chrysler still very much behind here in the farm, and we see underneath the tower, Tundra. We start poking at him, getting him pretty low. Chain Frost will be thrown out, but not too many bounces at all. And 33 is ready to go back in onto Chrysalis. Oh, Secret. Oh, oh. At this stage of the game, they can't even protect that punch underneath their own tier two. Rezo jumps forward. They're looking towards nine and nine. What a force down to the side. He's going to be able to step away. See if they can continue to try and get any further catch. Zyatz will be able to get the toss back onto nine, so they'll take him down. But, but look, very much, it, it's such a struggle here as we're seeing for Crystalis yeah. under tier two. Secret, the rest of the team pretty close by. They couldn't help him. And they now, need to get more. Tundra, they're ready to try and pick more kills out of this here as they head into the jungle of Secret. Catch out, Bobby Ravage with 33. Puts an end to the life of Zayat. So Nisha has to step back. It's just him and Rezo on the retreat right now. Rezo? Ooh, see if they can get any further setup. Rush from 33. Sharpshooter hit coming in as well. Respawns will be there for Secret Chrysalis back in action. Tundra, they won't push their luck. They know that they're maintaining this lead. And, and as we've seen time and time again, once they get that lead, Tundra, yeah. they very, very rarely throw it away. Especially if they have Skeeter on something like this Naga Siren. I mean, he's been absolutely free the whole game. He's got the Orchid, he's on his way to the heart, and there, it feels like there's going to start being some really big damage issues on Secret. And the map just continues to be pressured everywhere too, right? Tundra, they're forcing so much bottom. Every it's like four or five them. heroes of Secret having to react to this. Meanwhile, Skeeter's just, he's loving life. Plan is being executed perfectly by them. And for Secret approaching into any of these fights, like Zayats, he still doesn't even have his Blink Dagger yet, so him being able to jump in, get some type of repositioning, getting some fight advantages, it's not easy. Rezo is the one with the Blink as the initiator, but as we've seen time and time again, it, he's just very squishy at this point. He'll yes. just die if he goes in. It's not easy at all no. for, for him to find and the chance to get these <laughs> black holes off, and especially before he has that BKB done. And pretty much impossible if Tundra, they turn up in numbers. And look at this approach from 33. You know, we are talking about damage mitigation so much. It tends to be a big thing that Tundra's going for. The pipe, the Wraith Pact, and he's even queuing up a Mage Slayer. So a really cute approach. Because it's a Pudge, through this? Pudge and Lesh, right? Completely reliant on that magical damage. So if he just gets an Anchor Smash, if he gets that Mage Slayer applied on them, how are they going to be able to bring down the targets? Especially that Naga Siren, who's going to have this heart pretty soon. Each passing moment here. Each minute, Tundra. It's getting further and further ahead. Very much feeling the control they have on the game this early on as well. 22 minutes in, 8k lead. Yep. And they even have, you know, nine. Oh, we got the Orchid coming out. We'll be lucky to find an Illusion rune. He'll be all right. And yeah, they also have nine, who's going to be going for his standard Tusk build. He's going to be that straight physical damage burst also. So they have kind of everything going for them here to be able to take down, focus fire the Pudge, focus fire the Lash, reduce their damage, and take objectives. Yeah. That's the other big thing, too. It's going to allow them to get Roche a little bit easier and push those towers. Uh, it really very much is a case of, you know, even through that Bloodstone heal, Tundra, they will kill Nisha so quickly. Ooh. The secret's response, it has to be immediate with their sort of counter initiations in terms of the, the black holes and, yeah. and such. Radiant I mean, it's 22 minutes and there's attack. only two flesh sheep stacks. Never a position you want to be on the punch. But Chrysalis, he's got Ags done. Let's see what he's going to be able to do with this. So around the mid there. Into Wars 33. This is not an easy kill. He's very tanky. Very, very tanky. And oh my god, okay. For this one. There we go. I mean, they have to. I don't think they're getting that kill hey. if they don't then. They got it before he drops the pipe, before yeah. he drops the Wraith Pack. So sure, I mean, getting him off to. the map is That's important. the only way they kill him. Yeah. They've got to do it quick, they've got to do it safe, they've got to use the black hole in situations like that. I'll take him off the map, and it will at least sort of give them the a bit of peace here, maybe for the 30 seconds. 
knowing that Tundra, they won't have the tide for the fight. But nonetheless, though, Tundra, they're still that farm that they'll definitely still go Ooh. for a quick kill. Bottom. Tied or not. More than enough damage, probably. There it is. And some Deso stacks not for nine. Out. See Lotus. Now done as well for Nisha. So a little bit of an extra way that he can try and prepare himself for the fight. Give him a bit of a better shot of not being blown up. Some of the targeted abilities from Tundra. Yep, be able to protect him also. If there's like a snowball, he can even get inside the snowball if they play it a little bit perfectly. He can also dispel the boomerang buff, or debuff that is, which amplifies all that damage. Nisha? This bottom tier two is so scary, surely. Here for secret, unless they can ensure that Tundra put off from diving. And they will the get back. Chris as he hits the hook. Grabs Mag 9 before Skeeter's able to do anything to save him. And sort of freeze. The rest of Secret there with the song. So a good catch on to nine there, Secret. Coming in with some level of response now to the moves from Tundra. It's definitely not as smooth sailing as it has, as, as it has been for the last 10 minutes. Secret able to slow them down a little bit, bit by bit. Yep, and now they have the blink on the tiny. So an actual initiator rather than just forcing Rezo to be that one to jump in with Black Hole. Getting themselves back on the map. Every time they do kill one of those heroes, it feels it feels pretty massive, at least for Secret, but Tundra doesn't seem like they care too much. I mean, it's, it's just the Naga Siren, right? You know, Skeeter, he doesn't care if he sees a hero, a, a teammate die every now and then, wants a minute, just one off on their own. As long as he's still hitting the creeps, he is happy. It's Top of the coming. net worth and indeed with his heart, you can see Skeeter. Him and his illusions, it's not going to be easy to deal with. Sort of the main way to deal with it in terms of the Pudge and, and the less rack. We know that Tundra, they can kill these heroes. It's underneath the tier two mid, they're looking towards Crystalis. Skeeter, he's ready to commit in. As they go right in on top of him, Nisha will turn up for the fight, but Ooh, not able to charts. make any sort of move in time to save, and Crystalis goes down. And you see 33, he's ready to just waltz right underneath the tier two as well. Sides will jump over the toss back. Chain frog. They are getting nine pretty low. He's able to get the, the snowball off in time. Ravage there for 33 ensures that nine's got the space to step back. As Zayats will fall, the bushwhack from Saxa finishing him off. Secret trying their best to, to deal with this team fight. These, these dice, this aggression that Tundra is performing. Most times, 9 out of 10, they're not able to deal with it. No. They're not able to stop them from getting what they want. Tundra, they'll push down mid, take down this tier 2. Everything continues to just being ticks off the list here for Tundra. This Skeeter Naga is just way too farmed, really, for them. To, once he shows up to the fight, they're like, oh my god, we do not have enough damage to go through 3,000 HP. It's gonna take them quite a while, and it's into Wraith Pack, and it's into Pipe, and also we saw th the, our beautiful Observer point out an extra Cloak purchased up. I mean, he is gonna be going back for the Mage Slayer, as we mentioned. He was queuing up Blink for a moment, but yeah, just really looking for all that damage mitigation, making sure that Skeeter will probably never go down unless he gets caught by absolutely everything. So for Secret, next few moments, pretty difficult for them to look for these fights. Multiple Blink Maybe Daggers, you see even Puppy gets a Blink, they need any type of follow-up. They need the big burst, right? If they catch one or two heroes in a black hole, they need absolutely everything going on. That's a lot of weight on resolution. It is. He's got to do something incredible. We get the toss back here on the Snake King, but Puppy's like, Rezo's going to use the black hole. Only on one. Catch a Snake King, though, and the song's out. Tundra, they're able to reset the team fight. Puppy goes down. Zayat's also the ball. As they'll lose snaking, but they get to once again Tundra just proving at this stage to be almost impossible for Secret to fight into. Tough position to use Black Hole. Pre BKB even to all these stuns into Song. I mean he must be close to the BKB, right, Rezo? Getting closer. I mean he bought the Rest shard, he bought the lens, so he has delayed it quite some time for Radiant's himself. And Tundra now, they probably are like, okay, well, no black hole. We can yep. probably look for Roshan. Straight to Roshan, indeed. They know that there's going to be no chance of Secret heading out to this area of the yep. map. And they kill it fast with Riptide, with Deso, with Gush. See all that minus armor coming into play on top of the Orchid. Secret, they are reacting though, bringing four heroes. Scan is going to catch them. See if they can get any sort of fight going here. It's not easy. There's no black hole to rely on. They're still taking straight into the fight. Where Chris, as he walks for Snowball's going to be there for now. Gets them over towards Nisha. They're trying to step back, though. Nisha getting off a good amount of damage this Nisha. time. Nisha. on the sharpshooter. Comes in, takes down Zayas. Chris is trying to stand his ground with the dismember. The Force 9 back to safety. Roshan falling low. Chris was also having to back away. It's 33. He's trying to finish off the Rosh. Puppy and Nisha. They're stepping into the pit as well. But 9 heads in Snowball. They get the ravage off the Sentai. Rezo tries to jump in. quickly at the hands of nine but secret they're getting chased back away from the pit 
very much felt like a bit of a last ditch attempt there from Secret to try and stop Tundra, but they couldn't take the fight around the road. But it's four dead, nine continuing to chase. We'll see Poppy able to blink out just in time. It's a good fortune that he has that item there. I mean, it's wild how much damage is reduced there. In most situations, if there's not a pipe, if there's not I mean, a race so back, they up and they just still did they still, die. Like, look how much they only... I'm, I'm saying only because when we've seen these pudges with, on these leshes, when they're able to stick on targets, three heroes inside that, you would probably see some 10,000 worth of damage or something. But look at this. The damage mitigation completely protecting everybody there. A secret. They really had to go all in for, yeah. to make a move like this. And they certainly do. They go straight into the pit. And of course, having to try and fight, Rezo doesn't have his black hole back up. Look at the micro too, right? The Wraith Pack. Look, he pops it and sends it up north to kind of hide it away from everybody. Good. So secret, they're panicking to try to kill this thing. And meanwhile, they're all just dropping lower and lower. Yeah. Great plays from Nine. The Snowball initially to dodge the Chain Frost with his team, and then Snowball to kind of guarantee that they can get up that Roshan. Beautiful plays from Tundra. Masters of the team fight. They are seeming unstoppable here so far in this game. One 18k lead. And it's also, you know, Ravage, it wasn't up until that exact moment Nisha. as well too. Stepping up in the mid, they've got the arrow connection. This has already used the Bloodstone here. Look at the Lotus Orb up in time. A little bit of safety in his own snowball, but it's only going to tear him far away from the safety of any of his teammates as Nisha will get slowly but surely taken out. Poppy as well to fall. Zayat's caught out by the net. It's going to be three dead on secret. Wow. We'll see how much further they want to play this one out. It is grand finals after all, but this game one, it just looks like there's very few answers at all to what Tundra's doing right here. And it's versus that Lesh. They gave the Lesh. They had an idea, they had a concept, and it's working beautifully. Radiant structures. Full control of the game. I mean, 33. As they, you know, how we ended it at the end there. You know, talking about how important the tide is, how good he is on this hero, and we're seeing it 4 1 and 15. Even without the Ravage, we see the effects he's able to do from start to finish of this game. Radiant's middle barracks are under attack. Of course, Tundra. We've seen many, many times before in the games that they play. When they have this sort of lead, they'll ever so careful not to allow any opportunity for it to slip away from them. So they'll back off from the push for now. Interesting to point out also, Skeeter did buy the shard as well. So feels like they're really understanding this. Limit the damage. You know, this is going to heal for 40%. They're reducing the damage that's coming out from the Pudge and Lash. So how are they going to kill these these big beefy targets? They right? have to catch them split up. But as we've seen, it's, it's very, very few situations where Tundra, especially at this moment of the game, they choose to sort of fall back into positions that allow them to get caught one by one. Always playing around each other perfectly. Ah. Hook. Trying to get a first rate 33, but he has got the Ravage. Oh, pop it, and now there's the jump on Nine is straight in, takes him out, Rezobi has got the black hole up onto the two of them, but do they have the damage? Chain Frost is out, the BKB is already out from Nine and Skeeter. It was a nice two-man black hole, but there wasn't any follow-up. But now Tundra, it looks like once again, they're setting up for the cleanup. They've got the catch on Tunisia. Bushwag will trap him against the tree. The arrow for Snake, it keeps him locked down. He'll try and step back, but Tundra, the four or five of them, chase him down. He'll go for the TP out. He won't he cannot. Dead. Everybody dead on secret. Tundra, they're ready to resume, pushing down the mid. Radiant's middle barracks are under Just attack. seems like they're just way, I mean, this time they're way too far ahead, but they're always just, like you mentioned, everyone's Radiant's always middle playing middle around each other. This time, Ravage is at the ready. Radiant's 33 not even coming close to dying. And now they're all full health, because Skeeter pops a song and heals them up as well. Tundra. We'll see if they go for one more fight. But that one more fight for Secret, once again, will be lacking the big ultimate. Mm -hmm. Black Hole, of course, used by Reza there in an attempt to get something going, but really with the BKBs that Tundra have, if they get it off beforehand, then there's absolutely no chance of Secret killing these cores. 30k gold lead. I mean, full, full item for each hero pretty much coming out now. This is just, it's not a position where we've really seen any teams be able to turn things around when they've been against Tundra in no. particular. Especially Tundra get this sort of lead against you, it, it very much is over, yeah. unless something incredible happens. Especially when they have this Naga Siren, really. They've looked to be amazing. These illusion carries in particular for Skeeter, right? His CK, his Naga has been a pleasure to watch. In secret, they tried to set that pace early game, but almost never in this game did they actually have a lead. The gold was always actually pretty much in favor of Tundra. Tundra smoked up and you can feel it. They're ready to go for the finisher here. Puppy, blinking in. All right, walking down mid. 
Trying to catch the creep wave or something. Trying to get some sort something. of a distraction, you know, take Tundra away from the push. But the waves. some time. The waves are all in, though. She bought him a knee shot. Might be in a Ooh. bit of trouble once again. We'll see Poppy coming with the buyback, but that sharp shot there from, from Saxon. Any finishing him off, they'll go with the snowball over towards Crystalis. Chain Frost comes out from Poppy. Crystalis commits it with the BKB onto 33, but 33 is just so There's tiny. no damage. He barely cares at all that this Pudge is on top of him. Another hook from Crystalis will catch on, but 33. Oh. Oopsie. It wasn't the cleanest combo, but at this point, Tundra, they don't even need to hit these combos. They'll just back off and reset. Not the Ravage into Song, but... You know, a sort of blow away yeah, secret, but they can afford to mess that up sometimes. They got a 32k lead. Yeah, look, we don't need it. It's fine, you know. Do I have to watch out though? As we see, Black Hole back up in 10 seconds. Yeah, it's gonna have to be a five man. Even then, yeah, I don't it has know. To be a man. Doesn't yeah. even feel like they'll have the damage it's gotta anyway. Be a five man, and it's got to catch them before they press BKB. Yeah, and before Wraith Pact or Piper down. Right. We'll see. find nine in the trees. He gets the BKB off before the dismembers there. Sanctuary so able to poke in from the side. He's playing. the bushwhack. Crystalis, he's getting low. Nine tries to chase him out. Crystalis gets taken down. Nine. Caught by the fear. You see at the side, though. They're both Nisha. coming down. Nisha. Nisha goes down. Four stars to the side. Nine. Caught by the avalanche. They got go down. Secret. Able to find some sort of semblance of a trade there. They'll take out nine immediately. Nisha does come in with the buyback. I'll see if there's anything Secret can do here with this minute where Tundra are without their mid laner. Nisha can never walk up. He just walks in, gets fully focused from everyone on Tundra. And another item coming up for Skeeter in a oh moment. My goodness. More heal prevention, more damage re reduction, etc. Scotty's going to be coming out also for this Naga. Extra illusion as well with the level 20. Yeah. And illusion rune found us. On top of that, also, I expect us to continue to just see all three lanes push right up to the base of Secret. Secret are going to try and find that what oh, needs to be an immaculate team fight five man black hole It's just going to be so hard for them to do it anywhere outside of the base leaving this area of the map leaving the You know the, the some sort of safety of the high ground It's just so tough against yeah. what Tundra is doing on the map right now. Tundra's on cruise control. Let's snaking see if it got boosted to travel guys, 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 on I the five smoke, Marana Nice oh, They don't know what to do bro <laughs> come on, man. come on, relax. Okay, you're holding, you're holding, you're holding. I got my Vicky, I got Vicky, I got Vicky. Oh, well, there we go, very much. Okay, you can okay. see Secret. I think they know that this yeah. is a spot game one that's tough, but there's a long series ahead of them, so they're making sure to keep things like, keep things yeah, positive. And very much still continuing it to give it their all. Smoked up here, Zayat some resolution. I think most people find it, you know, you hear Puppy like kind of laughing in these type of games, and you're like, oh, okay, whew. <laughs> A heart now for 33. See, this is a scary <laughs> place of resolution in Zayat. Right, close by to Tundra. I am in the trees. Everyone on Tundra is just so farmed at this point. Pretty much every single hero in core. Zayat. So hard to get any. I'll get over it. Any grab, any toss back. Oh yeah, Snaking's got bots, Lotus, four staff, drum. I mean, right, this is five position Marana, by the way. We've seen some farm supports today. This one's attack. certainly up there from Snaking. Tundra just tend to do this a lot of times too, right? Distribute their wealth nicely, especially, I mean, at this point in this game, of course, when they have all the space in the world, but... Can they, they see 33, but it's... He's it's got 4,000 health. They're gonna try. Now get the toss back. It's just, it feels it's so rough nothing. to try and commit onto this tide. He just Mage Slayer hits them and they do nothing. They've, they've got to back off. 33 is toying with the idea of a Ravage as well. Nisha. Maybe getting caught out by the bushwhack. We'll get jumped by nine. He's in with the Warriors punch. A secret just scrambling back up towards the high ground. And I tell you what, I think they're quite lucky to get out of there with nobody oh, going down. They can't even. I mean, they tickle the tide. This build really from 33 is working perfectly. I, I mean, it's the, unkillable. The pipe wraith pack we've seen so many times, but just throwing in this mage slayer because he sees that both cores are this magic damage emphasis. Uh, six one and twenty one, exactly what you hope to see from your yeah. offlane. Four one fifteen. Roshan on Skeeter should be another one here for Tundra. Again, these illusions from Skeeter making sure that secret they cannot even dream of getting anywhere close to the Roshan. Every lane pushed in. Puppy. Upper journey, trying to maybe collect some bounty runes. Blinks will be okay, Snaking won't fight him. But the Rosh Empire, 40k gold lead, back to business. Absolutely just passing by the sort of 1k gold a minute, something that you very <laughs> rarely see in terms of, of a lead and at this stage of the game. Pretty much a full nullify done as well from, from 9. 
and even tougher to try and protect that core that gets jumped upon by nine. They're looking to go to. They're smoked. So many of these heroes just get immediately burst down, especially Puppy. With that Aegis, Tundra no. So they can look to get into the I mean, look face at the secret. 33's taking the tower by himself. He's I just mean, anchor smashing it. Yeah. He's got the talent. Chris is trying for some sort of a hook. They can't stop him. I mean, we'll see Zayats. He's looking for a toss back. A nine in response immediately on top of it. That's Zayats gone. No buyback for him. Crystalis. He'll pop the BKB. He's got to use it to step back, get some sort of distance between him and the rest of the team. He's going to try and stand his ground on 33. A nine jumps in with a warrior's punch into the snowball. Overall, he's your Oh, he's going to go for the black hole. The song, song is there. It's healing him. I mean, the black hole and damage oh. alone. Not enough to take him out through the BKB. Rezo's out. Does have a buyback, but even if he opts to do so, won't have a black hole to use. Tundra, they'll continue this push up towards the top lane. Taking down this set of barracks. A secret. We'll see if they go for one last move. Maybe hope that Tundra gets a bit close to their fountain, but Tundra, they don't mess around. They're not making any mistakes. 33 pops the Ravage. Catches out Nistra and Crystalis. Crystalis getting low. He might just be able to reset this time as he is over towards the fountain. Actually able to live Nisha. Also able to keep himself alive uh -oh. for now with the Lotus. Reflects the net, but 33 is getting in on top of him. No one else able to get Nisha away from Tundra. He's out for 100 seconds. The tier boards have gone. They're on to the ancient. Wow. GG is called. And Tundra, they take this game one. And my goodness, they take this game one. This was not close. Tundra in full, complete control. I mean, it felt like... After 10 minutes, Secret, they didn't have a chance at all in this one, Bog. It felt like even from Slacks, later. yes, we're ready to go here with game two. Secret versus Tundra. Let's see if Secret are able to fare a little bit battle. better, because that game one, it was a rough one. Tundra coming out all guns blazing and being able to take that first map against Secret. I mean, overall, we did it, of course, towards the end of the game. You no know, Secret, they were able to keep spirits high. We had a lot of positivity from the cons. Sure. Exactly what you need right after, uh, towards the end of a very rough start to the grand finals. Yeah, and I like the, you know, the big pivot that they made this game. Rather than looking to chase heroes around, looking to try to catch Tundra, which has seemed to be one of the biggest problems for the most teams this tournament, begins. they're the ones who is going to be forcing the issue and forcing Tundra to kind of react to them. So let's see if that works. We see right away Tundra, they go for this level one smoke play, incredibly strong level one with the Marcy with the CK stun to chase heroes. But we see the secret prepared. They had this early ward placed on top of their outpost to see immediately when smoke broke. So prepared for that early game. And we'll see how well, you know, Secret can deal with some of the more different heroes that Tundra are bringing into the fray this time. You know, eyes are going to be on nine, see how much he can do. Oh, that is it's annoying. Yeah, he's going to be able to get a, a bit of damage down to Crystalis as he tries to get towards his lane. He knows he has no risk. He's playing versus Chen in the lane, so you can easily go for these type of pressure plays, give 33 that first few creeps advantage. I mean, uh, so this mid matchup as well, you know, we're seeing two sort of greedy heroes here that mm -hmm. have potential to, to really become the carriers for both teams, the Morphling versus the Arc Warden. Uh, anything exciting to come out of the laning stage? Is just going to be a trade in farm, or, or do one of these heroes have to be more careful than the other in this matchup? Probably a trade in farm, maybe nine slightly ahead, if anything, but no, I'd say mostly just a trade. We've seen Nisha and just Morphlings in general. With the new skill build that you can go, you know, you only have to put two points in attribute shift. You're able to prioritize having more points in adaptive and waveform. You're able to secure CS constantly, so I'd imagine Nisha does do just fine. Looking at top, this is a, I mean, this is probably the more exciting lane, I would imagine, to look at the shards, the stun, the flesh, constant kill threats onto the Phoenix, maybe even onto CK. Bottom lane. Those sprays are stacking up, but oh, damage from Saction 33, it's enough to burst three Crystalis and take him out. He's going to even give a bit of a chase down onto Puppy. Uh -oh. He might go down too. Him off as well. Saxon will be ready to dive in under the tower. Right. It's a lane starting off with a double kill for 33. That is... That's not something you want to see if you're secret. This is just the Tundra, the Tundra offlane special, uh, you, right? You I mean, this is always what they do. Somehow, they're able to just always know how to apply so much pressure. And with this death, Soxa comes back, six tangos, a salve, 33, you see the items. They do this almost every time on the Visage. Tries to start with no regen, just tries to get mangoes yeah. and stats. So they can just keep doing this, I mean, Crystal is so much damage. He comes back into the lane and he's pretty much immediately down to a third of his HP. Top lane as well, we're seeing resolution. He's getting zoned Radiant back, snaking able to take down Zyze's his courier. Hit the shards down, but dives at the ready. The first few levels are incredibly oppressive from this Marcian Visage. This is one of their bread and butters. Puppy will start to attempt some stabilization with the lane, get the pullback. 
see what creeps he's able to get to kind of dissuade this damage that's going to be coming out. He gets a pretty good one. It's a good one to at least harass them back, kind of stop their aggression. See how soon they're able to get to a point where Chrysalis is... I feel a bit more confident to step up the creep waves. It's not easy off to the side, Saxa. Okay, the creep. looks to take down the creep. They know how strong that creep can be. Good choice to kind of go for it there. And this is a great lane for the Visage where it's like, yeah, the Bristle, we've, you know, as the panel, as the uh, Seven Note we're talking about, you know, you do counter this hero in a way as the game progresses, and even in lane sometimes, but also you have infinite mana, right? Visage is just always able to just bash out those spells constantly onto a Crystalis' Bristle. We've seen, uh, of course, Puppy quite able to take the small camp back before the respawn. Saxa, ensure that Goodbye. the ever, ever more tougher and tougher for Secret to gain momentum and control of the creep waves down in this bottom lane. 33 is able to hold it in a fantastic position. Good position and tons of regen, so they can go, always go for this harassment. Crystalis, I believe he's got his ring. Yeah, he's got it on the courier, so we'll have some sustain, but his stats overall will be a bit low because it's gonna take a very long time for that to come out, so could still look to apply pressure onto him there. Has got okay. his spells on cooldown at the moment, so Secret. I look to choose this time to strike. Skid and drags back size though. And ensure that that last right click required to take snaking down won't be allowed to be there. Still holding the fairy fire as well too. He's just kind of baiting them a little bit if they did try to commit. So far looking at the mid lane, yeah, Nisha, he's doing just fine. He's actually on three one one skill build. Okay. Not really feeling Dyer's like he needs to go for any attribute shift at all versus an arc warden only that one point. And on this bottom lane. Puppy in particular has to be very careful. I mean, Chrysalis as well, honestly. With the sidekick, with the rebound, full spreads are stacking up. Good God. They've, at this stage, with the lead that they've already managed to get against the Bristle, it very much seems that Marcy and Visage, they can kill that Bristle before the Quill Sprays become too much, and he starts killing them. They and know exactly when to push it, and they know that they can get away with it. It's exact. It's just like last time, right? When they have this Tide plus this Hoodwink versus that Pudge. This time it's Visage with Marcy. Heavy physical damage, Blades of Attack again on 33. Same build he's gonna go as last time. Not the Phase Boots, but of course just Wraith Pact, high damage. I mean, how do you sort of re recover from the state of this bottom lane? And it feels like one more death from Crystalis down here, and it's going to be very, I... very difficult to bring this lane back in Secret's face. I like that he bought the raindrop. I think that's a good, at least, attempt to be able to... Yeah, you can get a trade kill, probably, with those quills that we saw Soxa drop low. Just any type of small stats, any type of small survivability will help. His ring... He's still sitting behind the tower. He actually hasn't brought it out to himself. He won't in a second. I think the, the scary thing as well, of course, is from Sax. So, you know, having a good start down bottom with the levels that he's going to be getting in on him. You know, the other lanes, they've got to be prepared as well, right? The perfect hero, Marcy, to have high impact at any part of the map that, that happens around these tier one towers early. They've got to be prepared for Saxon to turn up and turn things around. Just like he was doing in game one as in Hoodsburg. Bottom lane, another jump over towards Puppy. Puppy and Chrysalis try and stand their ground, but Puppy goes down. Chrysalis might have a chance to chase Saxa out this time as Saxa has he got any further options of getting away. He doesn't, so Chrysalis finally finding a bit of action going in his direction. Honestly, maybe that's the way you have to do it. Just Puppy has to sacrifice himself. He has to be the one to just soak those soul assumptions for Bristleback to just get this type of trade. Otherwise, yeah, definitely seeing a bit of promise. But Crystalis, once he has Vanguard, he'll be able to at least stay down here a lot easier, and he's getting pretty close to it. As we can see now, despite sort of the deaths that have occurred down on that bottom lane, Chrysalis, he's reward. pretty much keeping he is. straight even with the farm that Skeeter, you know, carrying for Tundra on the other side. The map is getting as well. Yeah, yeah pretty much Vanguard is going to be done, so should be a lot safer. And Puppy, he's going to start getting some levels, so he's going to be able to actually protect Chrysalis. We see him grab some magic resistance and also just a little bit of extra damage. So that actually would help a lot. That little bit of Cloak Aura that's going to come out could protect Chrysalis enough. Let's see. What Let's time. see. So if Saxa 33 can get away with this, yeah. but now with the levels, indeed, at this stage, it, it very much feels like it, it's not going to be nearly as easy as it was for Tundra in the early minutes of this lane to take down the Bristle. And Chrysalis, whilst there's been a few deaths here and there, he, he's got through the rough bit. The lane. But, but this is level 6 already. That is pretty massive for 33, having it this early on. The flag is going to be here, too. Caught him in the shards, Nisha. He'll look to step over and finish off the kill. He'll get it. Zayats should go down into the spark break. So both mids able to take a kill out of this one. He's, here. He's turned up with the familiars, ready to chase out Nisha. Nisha's got a fair few one charges. It's only a level one shift. Back up, he can't. 
The burst is there from nine. It ends up being a double kill for the mid arc warden. And they do punish him for having level one attribute shift, right? Maxing a waveform, having two points in the adaptive. You do see that they're actually able to get that damage come out. And all that is because 33 hits the six so fast yeah, down bottom. He's able to come in. And of course, the, the timings that are enabled off Dyer's the back of that is pretty huge already. The, the completed Midas out onto nine. Wow. He's able to get this you know, started very, very early on. Beautiful. As he's, he's going to be making the money. There's every reason to believe and that unless Secret can make any moves to find this Arc Warden, Nine, he's going to start shooting far, far ahead of anyone else in this game with feels, regards to the farm he'll get. It feels like it could get to these points where maybe the CK pick is kind of this distraction, you know, and this Arc Warden, he's going to try to transition hard into that real carry for his team. Other good thing about the double Midas, as we saw there, you automatically get two neutral items. It's actually very nice when you're able to get it this early on on Nine. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And now they're actually, so look at this, bit okay. of a dynamic change. Yep. They're going to put the Visage mid, have him match up versus that Morphling, and they're going to send the Arc Warden for the time being down bottom. So top lane. Trying to go for snaking. They do connect with the stun. Nice play. Secret. They get in and take him down, and will in fact see Tundra sort of bail out from this top lane. Give a chance for Secret. They'll put some pressure on. And likely with the TPs out, probably not going to be an area of the map that Tundra will look to hold on to. I mean, we did see this, of course, last time round as well, right? Game one, nine minutes in, secret, they get this good timing on the tier one. Snaking will turn back up. See if he's able to do anything on his own. He has to be very cautious. Secret still with three members around, look at the pressure on this top lane. So. He's just soaking, it looks like. Just trying to soak up any of that bit of experience. But the, the fact that this has happened twice now, it Dyer's very much seems that you know, Tundra, as a team, they sort of make the call to, did you not put any resources into holding that tower? Just let it go. They tend to be, you know, that extremely efficient team, as we hear lots of players talk about. Very frustrating to play versus Tundra, because they know how to dodge these, dodge these plays, dodge the aggression, trying to make as little mistakes as possible. Another neutral item, of course. And yeah, giving Soxen now some levels, too. So distributing that well, top two net worth, and the CK Skeeter, he's hero, he jungles just fine. He's gonna be able to keep his pace up and probably look to do what he was doing anyway last time is still look to connect top, use Phantasm just to farm, kind of acting as this pseudo Naga Siren. Of course, last game, very much saw the secret. They never really found that chance. Just sort of get Chris Lizabon top play, Snakey. Out with the dive, doesn't right. matter. He's sure. got those final few right clicks chasing him down. You get the kill, so things looking, looking good here for Nisha. You know, despite the quick Midas timing on nine, Nisha very much yeah. close yeah. behind him in farm. <laughs> and he's got this matchup always. It's, she sucks, sucks. Man, she get on him. He's got anything to rebound out towards. He doesn't. They Secret, they hold him in the river. They're going to bring it up even now, six to six. Secret definitely doing a bit of a better job this time round at, at responding to some of these movements that Tundra's making around the map. And playing around Nisha, right? They, they, with the skill build that he has, he has so much burst potential. He actually always has the gap closing potential as well, too, versus most of these heroes that can sometimes be a bit annoying to get on top of, so. So far looking to continue to play aggressive around this Morphling. And definitely seems sort of a, a bit of a heavier focus around playing around this jungle of Tundra. Just yeah. trying to make sure that Skeeter doesn't get nearly as much space as he did last game. Obviously, the, the difference in dynamic this time is the concern that too much is focused on trying to shut down Skeeter's area. Nine goes uncontested, and it's been quite a few minutes now that Nine's been able to sit down here on this bottom lane. He's getting complete free farm. He's what starting space. to starting to be pretty Radiant's annoying too. Crystals is caught in an awkward position. Eats two or three of those spark rates. He's trying to hook up from Secret. I'm going to try and make moves here. And so far, Resolution sides have done a pretty good job of killing off Snaking when they catch him. Skeeter. It's going to be a bit of a bigger kill. They're going to go straight in for him. It's close to the tower, though. Let's see. And it looks like Tundra may have made the call to not sort of throw in any further Dyer's TPs. I mean, it doesn't even, it's Dyer's not even needed there. Tundra, mid. they make the Dyer's sort of calm response to not react with TPs, knowing that Skeeter's just able to walk that one off. But with that slight moment of, like, space at all, you see Puppy rotate toward mid. This is how they want to be playing. They want to be the ones who are dictating that pace, dictating this tower aggression. But we'll be able to claim this one early. Nisha, he's almost got his Dragon Lance also finished up, so. Under very farmed so far on secret and they're also in the meantime i saw they are starting to stack ancients a little bit too so making sure they do have that condition for the bristle back to continue getting that increased farm so good secret though infinitely better than that last game it's certainly feeling a bit more solid but i, I imagine to a sort of a point with regards to the drafts 
this is sort of expected, right? This time around, Secret, they, they gave themselves a bit of a better shot of having the sort of earlier hold, earlier pressure that they're able to apply. And at the same time, you know, the change with Nine playing an Arc Warden instead of like a carry. Exactly. He's going to react to sort of these moves a little less. So I don't think you know, Tundra, they're not going to feel too under pressure despite losing some of these early towers. They've gone for a bit of a different approach this time Absolutely. around. And, you know, at the moment, under a 1k gold difference between the two teams. Nine, I think he's still very happy. Yeah, it's, just, it's a totally different approach, right? The last time they had the Tusk was super aggressive, constantly rotating, making plays. Now it's just, it, it's a full economy game, really. Everyone's just trying to find Radiant's as much farm as possible until they find this attack. timing. Wraith Pact is done. Looks like now they're trying to speed up a little bit, go for a tower pressure of their own. They'll take this one for sure. And we uh, have no interest in this in this fight, this defense around this bottom tower. Radiant's Secrets maximizing, you see now, as we we're mentioning, the stacks. Triple Ancient stack, double hard camp. So Crystalis will have a bit of enabling coming out of your juicy stacks. Good farm for Crystalis. We saw very much in game one as the Pudge pretty much held behind the entire time in terms of farm on cause. You can clear these stacks, get on the road towards the Aghanims. That's going to be the point where you can imagine the secret. They're going to really start stepping things up and get up towards the tier two pushes with a Vanguard, Aghanims, Bristle. They're going to want to do as much as they can aggressively with it before Nine suddenly turns up and he has three items stuff. Very farm heavy game though. Showing all three lanes. See the Morphling shows bottom for a second. They show mid, I believe, on Zayats. Even the Lesh top two, but good ward coverage. So secret they know they're safe for the moments. I'm kind of grouping together with Puppy, with the mech, with the hand of God. They're tanky. There's a lot of damage on Tundra, but this Bristleback with all these heals might just be able to pierce through them. Let's see if they can get on top of any of Tundra. Ooh, I mean, they're... Tundra's staying pretty hidden outside of the vision of secret. I mean, secret they know that Tundra do have a few up here in the jungle. If they get any big kills, Seeker could even look for Roche potentially. They're gonna settle for Saxa. So it catches wind of the Marcy off to the side. I'm going for Saxa. For Tundra, definitely not the biggest of losses there. They had a few cores farming in that area in the secret. They weren't they're, able to find they're, them. They they're go gonna for the do support. it. They're gonna go for this. Roche. They have I mean, it's more than enough damage. They have the goo. Do they do anything about this Tundra? Are they going to expect the secret so. back up as quickly as they did into the pit? It's not an easy place it's to fight It's going down so quick. Yeah, it's going to be dead already. Secret, dictating the pace. Very, very, very good moves here from Secret so far. Absolutely getting to play their game so much more than they are able to do so last, last game here. 15 minutes in, they've got the Aegis in their hands. So. Ooh. Oh. So close. Well, it's close indeed. Snaking and D throwing out a tip for that Radiant's one. That was is under attack. as close as it gets, really, on the, the back of an escape in the TP. So Tundra perhaps wanting to make a move of their own now. Right. They do, because everyone's shown, right? Secret, they have been shown a lot in these lanes. So Tundra looks like they do want to try to counteract this. They have nine who can constantly always show up to the fights, too. Yeah, I think for, for the most part, Tundra know that even though the secret had that Aegis, it's sort of an Aegis that's going to be used to, to just continue to allow Nisha to farm safely. Yeah. And secret will be a little bit split up. Which gives the chance for Tundra to push for towers themselves and to, to sort of head straight into these fights, knowing that they'll probably have the numbers advantage at this stage. And they can take these towers pretty quickly as well, too. The Visage with the CK Phantasm tends to be always a Tundra strategy, right? There's just there's so much on the floor. Break pack, illusions, familiars, etc. So they can go for this push, but on the other side, secret. Taking tier two tower here. Nice Edict. and early, 16 minutes in. Tier two to fall on the top lane. And now they'll really be able to start taking over this jungle, this half of the map from Tundra. Really sort of shutting down the areas that at Tundra, they kind of need to find right, at least at their two main cores. They need space, Skeeter and Nine. They want to be soaking up quite a lot of the map to get farm on these two carries. Yeah, it feels like it's going to be quite a long time before Tundra just looks for this head-on type of fight. Unless they see, like we said, unless they see Secret completely split up or something like that. Feels like it's going to be going to be quite a farm game coming up from them. Even Soxa now showing mid. He might get punished for this. They got him before. Looks like they're going to go for him again. Let's see if they can find him, Zayats. Again. Did they get, I don't think they got vision of him for a second. Now they did. Soxa has Skeeter by his side, but... Too much. Won't be able to jump over towards him in time. And his Saxa going down. Similar wards coming out from Tundra as they did in the last game. So this one, exact same ward, and actually this one not on the high ground this time, but similar kind of similar kind of purpose to watch any of these movements that are coming out from Seeker. Because Tundra, as we said, I think this is really gonna be pretty emphasis of farm until Nine says, hey guys, I'm ready to show up. And maybe that's gonna actually happen sooner than we expect, because I believe the Gleipnir is about close. to be done. Just so. a recipe away. 
that could be the indicator for them to show up. It does add so much potential for this hero. The damage, the control, everything, of course. But it allows you to just freely land spark rates and kind of just keep people away from getting on top of you. So let's see if that is when they are going to look to fight. It could be difficult to close that gap onto nine, especially considering the heroes that are drafted around him. A lot of frontline, even sort of from the support Dyer's right? Yes. Snaking, getting him with a supernova. Saxa Dyer's throwing himself in as the Marcy, getting him with the rebound. Very much multiple ways that Tundra can set up a team fight to just allow Nine to go to work. With Secret having a really tough time getting on top of him. Constantly thinking about it. It's hard to push for this sound. Even with the moments left on the Aegis, Secret being very careful about how they look to make the next step. Risky move. Don't want to overextend and get five men. They haven't seen this. They haven't seen the Arc Ward in a while, so they probably don't know either what Nine's got just yet. Level 13 on this Arc already. Running around as a unit. Four heroes together on Secret. Well, it's Chrysalis. Looks like he's got the BKB ready, so. Look, it feels like yeah, Secret, they're just going to keep trying to push the tempo a little bit faster here. Out of blink now on the ledge, too, for Rezo. So, as you mentioned, can be a little bit hard to maybe get to this Arc Ward without just the Morphling getting on him. Now Rezo's got a tool of his own. Okay. And you very much feel that Secret are on a timer, like even though they have this niche of Morphling that's going to be able to, to get to these incredible stages of power in terms of scaling, you still kind of fear the Arc Warden as the moments pass? Fear the high ground for sure. Rezo. Tundra. Got to quickly back out, Snaking. Oh. Away in time, that Snowball not able to catch him. Tundra avoiding the moves of Secret. Secret just trying to get some sort of aggressive play out of these Dyer's final few seconds that they have on the Aegis of Nisha. It's back over towards the mid, Saxa. A bit of a chase down onto Puppy. Puppy has got back up on the way. Chrysalis heading over to help out and Tundra. They won't try and poke up into the triangle of Secret quite yet. And they will with Skeeta at the front. He's actually going to go for Puppy. See Chrysalis now as Chrysalis starts to try and push back Tundra and Nisha. It's coming. It's coming in from the side there. But there's no more on Skeeter. But Sax is in with a rebound. Stop up to Nisha. Nisha starting to try and shift. But that's he's gone. He's got Aegis though. He's going to be back for round two. Chrysalis charging him with a BKB. Over towards the Phoenix of the Snake. He's able to get the Supernova off. Secret, they've got to back away from the ultimate for now. As Nine turns up with the Tempest double. No longer an easy fight for Secret to charge into. Zyx, he's trying to find some sort of angle from the side. But Tundra, they're here as a full fight, man. They're looking for Snakey, but the dives back up. They get the stun control out of the Skeeter. Skeeter turns with the stun himself, but he's life stealing back up. It's not enough, though. Skeeter goes down. Secret. Able to get one kill out of this, maybe more. Crystalis trying well, to beat the charge. Secret, they want to they get something else out of this. Tundra, Zyx are in the trees. Duke off to the side, back under the tier two. He'll be fine, but Secret. They force a fight there around the expiring ages of Nisha. They get Skeeter, and with that in mind, they'll be able to get themselves straight onto Tundra's half of the map and continue to grow this league. Perfectly rallied, right? Rally around Puppy. That's got to be the name of the game. He's got the flats, he's got the mech, he's got all these auras. We see the ice armor coming into play. Crystalis had no fear. He pops BKB and he just starts charging right through everybody. And then they nicely kite and play around that supernova beautifully. Tundra maybe going a little bit too hard going into this secret lineup when there still is that Aegis. So 10 seconds until it was going to go down. Yeah, it was a very clean reset as well there from Secret as soon as yeah. the Supernova comes out. They're able to sort of back off. And, and you can see, you know, from Tundra, they still commit into this. They very much feel that they've got the strength to do so with the five of them. It wasn't quite the case. Losing Skeeter here to what was a very patient Zyax, just keeping himself held to the side, My looking for that opportunity reward. to open things up onto Tundra from maybe an angle that they weren't quite ready to, to sort of expect that entrance from the toss from. Back in action, talking about the toss, Zyax! Woo! Then with a jump, they lock down Snaking, Skeeter looks to turn, they've got the lightning control out, but Skeeter is trapped! He's not trapped on the low ground, he'll stand his ground, the turtle was ready, the Prince coming out, and they can take out the two of them! It's a double kill for nine! Oh my, was so Soxa gets the two-man rebound and they get the chain stun oh from man. the birds? I mean, oh man. This time around, a very much case of secret. Kind of making the the, the move into to committing for the fight, but not having what it took there to, to sort of take Skeeter down at the same speed they're able to do back mid. Tundra able to turn. 
And immediately off the back of taking down those two cores, they'll take the tier one fallen. tower. And yeah. closing that lead, the secret we're building, it's back down to sort of straight even here on the gold. It's so much sustain that comes out really from Tundra's draft too. Their Vlads, their sidekick, everything coming to play. I mean, look at Skeeter. I mean, watch his HP. I think a couple of nice armor toggles there as well for Skeeter, very much keeping him fully in action. Between that and the heals, there's just too much. They couldn't kill the CK this time round. Not rallied around Puppy. You know, they have to be a little bit careful when they don't have all these auras that are making them that much tankier. Tundra's damage is pretty insane. Yep. And when they go for those plays and nines, just able to sort of sit back at a distance. Yep. It's concerning. You know, He's loving two life. kills for nine. And now they also have an AC, so starting to build up these auras to even counteract and play against this Chen, but also protect versus this big damage that comes out from the Bristle and that morph. 33 is quite large. Yeah, and we see with nine next time queued up, it's going to be the blink dagger, so it'll be even harder okay. for Secret to get that jump onto him. We see any sort of snowball or hero running up at this arc ward at nine. He's going to be able to blink back, reposition, and allow the rest of his team to, to sort of be there in between him and Secret. I love this type of build. Eventually, you can always build into like these overwhelming blinks and whatnot on arc ward, and then you have these double blinks and all this aggression you can do too. It's very oppressive. It's Tundra. Now starting to find their footing completely. Well, they're pretty to themselves. Sidekick bird. Look how quick the tower drops. See you later. Gone in a matter of seconds, even even if that. And off the back of that, immediate smoke from Tundra. They know that Secret's playing over on Tundra's half the map around their jungle. They're feeling incredibly strong with this with this newfound AC on 33. This is a tough time for Secret to take a fight. They also disassembled to the BKBs and ready. Nine with the Tempest Dominic start things off with the Glyph and they grab back Zayat. Secret, they've got to run. Oh. Hey, that's also really cool that he can do with the blink too, right? Now he's he has an initiator. They don't need to actually rely on yep. the Marcy being the one to jump in. in. He just blinks in and gets a Glyph for initiation. Yeah, BKB, Skeeter had just finished that one up, so they felt strong to be able to go for this play. And now he's got Mage Slayer as well too, so... Items starting to be picked up on the side of Tundra, not only just to do lots of damage, but of course, damage mitigation as we've seen so much from them. AC, Mage yep. Slayer, it's gonna start to reduce a lot of Secret's potential. It's so hard for, for them to burst through Skeeter like they were able to do that yep. one time when he was caught on their half of the map. It's it's a really good item this game, just like last time, versus that Lash versus the Bristle, reduce the damage of the Quills, even the burst that comes out from Morphling. So, it's starting to come together for them. It's a very common build, of course, too, for Skeeter. I think for Secret Nisha, almost certainly making the call for them to just sort of hold off on any further engagements until he gets his BKB done. Yeah. About half the gold away from the recipe, and it will be there, but it's gonna be a little later than the timing that Roshan is gonna be back in the game here. Roshan respawning. They're Secret, walking up. They are up on the high ground. They definitely wanna try and do their best to push Tundra away from going for the Rosh. See if they can hold them off from it. That's Tundra. They won't feel the need to be too scared of Secret. You know how strong they are. Secret, they look at the smoke up. Trying to catch Tundra from an angle they won't expect is not going to be easy when Secret currently hold the position they are. They're gonna try and swing around from the west. Lanes are starting to kind of get pushed out though. We see Tundra cutting away mid. We've got this ward on nine. Nine. He's already out of this area. This is the Tundra special, right? They start shoving those side lanes in to try to put you into this awkward position of a fight. Everyone rallied around each other. How do you make the call a secret? How do you make the jump? Tundra with their own smoke. They don't want to overextend for these type of jumps either. Like, we're, like we were saying before, they need to stay kind of rallied around Puppy. Make sure that they can utilize these auras at a maximum. Tundra, Tundra just rotating sort of all the way around where Secret tried to step out for. They found Puppy. And they're going to be able to get on the easy kill first. Straight on over the chair. Puppy caught by the Hex. Taken down. Zions tries to roll in, but there's no place for him here. Puppy pig pulled himself. Doesn't even get to get any heals off or anything. No Wraith Pack, no mech. Caught by the stun anyway, so likely dies. But now yeah, but it's about... an option for them to go for Roche. And with both supports down, I don't think the cause of Secret are going to want to turn up for this. Oh boy. This should be a free and easy Roshan for Tundra. Free shard as well. Skeeter's gonna be loving that. He actually passes it away. Looks like he's gonna give it to nine. Okay, so more ways to, for him to protect himself and also magic resistance. So they can actually hold it. So we're talking more so much about damage mitigation, of course, but this is another element that I feel like we don't really get to see too often. You fight inside the bubble, yep. your lash is bristle, the damage might not be there. It's, 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 it's gonna be a fair cool bit of protection. Indeed, able to be kept consistently up and out on the field. 
And things are starting to get a bit scary because the scaling for Tundra is getting quite strong. Even the Marcy, level 12 is online. BKB is on the horizon. 12 on Phoenix. Game plan for Secret is starting to get kind of dissuaded. Around the mid, they do find 33. Okay. Allen on his own. He's very deep. He might be able to do something about the Familiars as well here. Big pickup. Slip a slip up a rare one as well there for 33. Out on his own. He out now for 40 seconds. Can they turn it into more? Is there something they can do with this one? Yeah, they have to push out this bottom lane. Top is being dealt with with Puppy, but do they have an opportunity to go for anything here? Sax is very close to his BKB. Already once again, you know, Tundra supports so many games where their supports mm -hmm. just turn, they turn into additional cores. Also to Marcy, very much sort of the direction that Saxon will go as the minutes pass, Skeeter. So having his Blink Dagger done, may have killed 33, but indeed it, it definitely feels like there's not a whole lot they can do with that. They're looking towards Nine's Tempest double at the top. See if they can sort of burst through, they'll get a bit of extra gold for themselves. They will, they'll take it down. Have to go for the top play because yep. we looked at the side lanes, mid lane, Phantasm was pushing it bottom, Phantasm Illusion was also pushing it. So it's a typical Tundra trying to shove those lanes down. And now they see this, they see them split up. So Tundra, they're looking to strike. Full axe on Crystalis. Comes out late though. Does not quite at the timing that they would have hoped for, especially considering the decent start they did have to this game. Zayat, with the one left behind up top. Could have been Tundra, everybody back on the map now. Ready to get together. Push down on this top lane. Still many minutes of Aegis to play with. Full Octrine oh done boy. on nine. He's so far. 6,000 ahead of his counterpart. And there's going to be no catching up in, in terms of farm unless no Secret are able to find these fights where Nish is able to pop off, get the kills, somehow take down this Arc Warden. It's going to be a lot of money if they're able to do so. It's not an easy task. He's got his Chrysalis done, Nisha, so stepping up the damage a bit. We'll see how explosive he will be if he's able to get in. The center of the fight with the waveform, stand his ground between the BKB and the Manta that he has. He's going to need as much... I, I feel like it's really appropriate that he's going to I feel like they're really just going to need all the physical damage as possible, because as we were saying, you know, they just have so many different ways to mitigate that magic damage that they always tend to do. Especially with that Arc Warded bubble as well, too. So, yeah, straight physical Radiant's damage, go waveform attack target. And with that, with the goo as well, too, he could be dealing a lot of damage. But so far, Tundra, they've started to really just take over this map. 5k lead, 4 to 5k. I mean, no, nowhere near as terrifying as the numbers were showing at this no. moment in the game, in game one. But still, you very much feel that one more fight, if the next fight crumbles for Secret, that number, that lead's going to triple. Secret, they cannot Dyer's afford to lose Sunder another team fight here against Tundra. At the moment, very much seems like they're opting to wait out the Aegis that Skeeter has. Radiant's not looking to head straight into anything for this final minute. But Skeeter has that second life. Is under attack. Again, pop those Phantasm to send out to all these side lanes. Bottom is being pushed, but immediately nine goes down. So again, sticking together Tundra, and they will just find a freebie. They will indeed, Zayas. I mean, any one that they catch with the farm that Skeeter has. And now that's completely destroyed. High ground. They've got drums for these birds. They've got the sidekick we're going to see on the bird, too. They and look at the this. speed. Look how fast it drops. It's going quickly. Fortification is there from Secret. They've got the Rezo. They've got Shard on Rezo, so he's going to be able to slow it down a little bit with these chain stuns. We'll see if Nisha can do anything here. He's ready to TP over. Help out with the defense. Oh, this is dirty. Look at these birds. Birds with magnetic field magic resistance, the attack. I mean, they're just so I strong. Did. They are huge annoyance to deal with here for Secret. We'll go for the resummon. Stun, he's greater. He's low, but he's still got 20 seconds or so left on the ages. He's gonna back off. We'll see them catch out the two of them with the root. Skeeter focuses in, I'll be him going down. Rezo. The final few seconds of the ages. He's ready for round two. Saxa, he'll charge him with the unleash of the BKB. Quickly turning towards him with his right clicks. They got the Marcy's life. Saxon to fall. Grab the Chrysalis. Gear of 33. They get back in on top of the Bristol. They take him down. Nisha popping the BKB. He's having to use it to retreat back to the high ground. He's in straight away. Blinks up into the high ground. They've got the lockdown over towards Nisha. Wave for back up in time. Nisha gets away. Double buyback from Secret. They're putting everything into this defense. But Skeeter's in with a chaos ball over towards Resolution. It doesn't matter though. Skeeter goes down. 
Seacroft with the two buybacks. They'll be able to hold and push Tundra back. Nisha able to stand his ground there. Look at the damage done. 9,000 damage from the Morphin. The buybacks coming perfectly. A defense for sure here from Seacroft. But they'll want, they'll want more. They got to push forward for sure. Priscilla spending up for that one. See up to the side, Zayat. He's got the catch there, the gap control onto Snake King. Snake King popped the supernova, but Chrysalis is He's gonna it. die. And he's ready to help take the egg down. Secret. They'll find another down bottom. Rezo. He's got his eyes on Nice. Oh. That's already been used, and he's out in time. Nine. Able to get away before he's able to put a stop to him. They'll still clean up the Tempest double. A secret. With this sort of pushback, they're able to bring in the mid lane, bring in the bottom lane. And we get the creep waves back under sort of their momentum, and they may just be able to take some tier twos away from Tundra here. Close the gap, close the lead that Tundra's had for sort of the last 15 minutes. Yeah, this time it's Tundra fueling themselves a little bit too much in that fight, just getting counteracted from those buybacks. The damage, this time Rezo's able to hold his ground. I mean, we're, we're very much seeing it. You know, you get given sort of any window from Tundra, you have to take full opportunity of it. Immediate smoke. Exactly what Secret's doing. Yeah, they got to smoke to sweep the map. They still have some heroes dead. Ults on cooldown. Try to get as much as you can out of all Yeah, they've got to keep their foot slammed down on the middle. Oh, Hits the The point 33 off the start. Took to himself for now, but they're surrounding him, and he's got nobody else in the area. So 33, he'll go down. Secret, they continue to play it hard and fast, fighting back. Big a place. Tundra. A huge place, really. Those buybacks are really coming into play. 33 Radiant's even, he accepts that. He had the Aeon just locked. He's like, no, 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 no. No one's coming to help me. As Secret Dyer's find their way back into this game. Nisha, Nisha. He's massive now. Level 20 about to be taken. Also, Daedalus is finished. Big damage to come out from this mall. He's going to be able to focus fire these targets a little bit better. I mean, it was seen, as I say, so many times before. Nisha on the mall think this is the hero. You want to have him in on, on in this sort of position. He can absolutely carry any sort of game to the later stages when he's on his mall fling. To top lane. So of course now done. Rezo, very nine. he's very deep. There's a hex. Look at the opening hex. And Rezo is going to be able to get anything off. He's not. Phantasm's out. An overwhelming amount of damage there from Skeeter and the Phantasm. That's the hex reveal. He had no idea that was going to come. Usually you'd, you'd be able to let maybe play around with the, the pounds coming in or the rebound coming in from Marcy with the BKB, but did not expect that hex from the tree lines. Roche, it'll be a long spawn. Two minutes. Zayats, standing under a ward here. Very careful how far up he is. I mean, Secret are absolutely going to want to do their best to keep tabs of when Tundra heads into the pit. They don't want to get out there, they don't want to contest them. They do not want Tundra getting this next row shot. Nice play from Nisha. The illusions down bottom, we see them cutting the wave. So, making sure that they always deal with those lanes. It seems like it's always like the most important thing when you're playing versus Tundra. Keep that lane equilibrium. We'll be addressed immediately. Sign shows up. And they're going to just keep peep peeping into the pit. That's going to be that next big thing, 90 seconds. It really is. See if Secret can set up in a fashion to make sure that they are ready to take this fight around this area. Going to look at these buyback statuses at the moment too. So. Oop. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hopefully, uh, simply sort of some, potentially maybe just a hotkey issue or something. See if that's going to be fixed by a quick reset here for snaking. Mm -hmm. uh, very much, yeah, the moment that we're going to see them leading towards now. He's back in. Let's see if he can use his courier now. Give a quick check. Look at lane positioning at the moment, though. Secret have to try to fix their lanes a little bit. They do have this Harpy creep. They need to perhaps try to cut things, but the moment Tundra have lanes in a very good position. Let's have a look. Phantasm is up in a moment as well, too, so they're going to be able to keep going for this shove play. And yeah, Roche constantly going to be getting scouted. And the important thing is, too, Secret doesn't know about that deep ward down south. The one that was scouted in Zyde's board, that's a very sneaky one that has not been seen. Oh. It's not a good sign. Uh-oh. Let's get Curious Bug. Let's see if there's going to be a simply simple solution to this. <laughs> <laughs> a standard Ali, unlucky. You say so. Yeah, unlucky. And that Nisha smile. Let's see if we're able to get this sorted. A little bit of a, you know, not, not really something you can play on with. It's locked, he says. Let's see if they can fix it. So a big thing really to look at is, I mean, this, this hex is going to be a big one, really. Let's have a 
it looks like we're just getting this checked out now on the stage. Hopefully it should be an easy enough fix. I mean, I'm not saying I could say I've run into before, right? I've had, a, I've had it with neutral items sometimes when you're trying to take it with warriors and smoke. Maybe something like that is happening, but it doesn't have a neutral there, so... So I think with maybe the speed that we did have to reconnect the first time round. Could have been without a client reset, so... Yeah, let's see. Probably go for the, the full restart this time round. Hopefully, if not, he'll be able to at least drop the wards and give them to a different courier so somebody else can bring them, but... Still wouldn't quite be ideal. No way. Of course, this pause is coming at a very important moment of the game. 17 to 17 here, 35 minutes in. Without a doubt, very much getting much more of a, a balanced game of Dota 2 on our hands this I mean, time round. It's secret they've dealt much better with, with what Tundra's brought against them this time round. It's really neck and neck. Just because, I mean, especially how big Nisha really is, how much he's going to be able to do with this Daedalus. And he's approaching his second item afterwards, too. So survivability will be there for him. All right, let's see. Let's have a look. Fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen, that things are going to be all working after the pause. Let's see. Oh. oh. Uh, doesn't look it looks, it looks good. Oh, is it? Dumping? No, it's, it's spazzing. I actually see it. It's like kind of, it's like stutter walking actually in the base, I think. Look, look like for a second it tried to move. But yeah, it says retrieving items. See, look. If you click on the, click on snaking skirt, it says retrieving items. On the actual courier, it's a buff. Ooh, okay, now we're giving it another try. Because usually he tries to pull it from... Well, he dropped it. There we go. Oh, Looks like go. we're good to go. A little bit of you know, a way to break out of it. A, a bit of a soft flop that was there on the career. But it's all good. We're all I, think good. We, I think we all Got needed it. that. You know, a little bit of a reset. Okay, let's get back into it. So, you know, that was always a bit of a concerning position, but we're all good. We're all good. It has been fixed. We'll see if it's... Should be an issue down the line, maybe. Yeah, the, the career was just sort of stuck or something. But it's good. It's all good. We're back on. And around, of course, the focus. Next up for both teams, gonna be this Rosha. Just in a minute until it's gonna respawn. Wow, Nisha already All has, yeah, I mean, has it. He's cool. getting the items, Nisha. He's getting the items to be able to do this. He can, still, yeah, obviously a huge gap in network between him and the R4. That's yeah. always gonna be expected up to a certain point at this stage, especially with the amount of freedom that Nine's had. And Nine, of course, this game, 4 0 5. Just pretty much complete free farm across the map. If they can get the hex, though. Ah, they're only getting that opening. There's no more save, though. It's going to be there. Give Nisha a bit of a chance to break out of this initiation from Tundra. They jump across sides, looks towards 33. They push Saxa out towards the side. Nisha beating him down, takes out the Marcin. They look towards the Tempest double next. Tundra losing that Marcy, losing Saxa like this. They're, they're very careful about how they commit for the fight further. Beautiful play, really, from Zayats. Just immediately, that's the big thing they have to watch out for. It's just the chain control. If they can chain stun, chain hex the Morphling, that's the way the Tundra kills them. I mean, All he, eyes on Zayats to go for those yeah. things. Oh, there's again the hex. So Zayats by his side. He's got to be there every, every time. single time. Zayats making sure that there's a chance for Nisha to fight back. They can't shoot the further stun. The Nisha's in so much trouble. They've taken it down. He bought out. Out for 80 seconds. He didn't have BKB still available. They, they just commit for him. I don't they, think Secret saw he, that. All the apples are satanic to rely on, but he, even if he gets that off, he's getting caught in the stuns. Oh, boy. Almost certainly. And, I mean, Roche now is for the taking. Uh, it certainly is. It's a big Perfect one. Perfect time for it to be back up here for Tundra. They head over to the pit. And with no Nisha, no Zayats, nothing that Secret can do about this. This, this is going to be a free Roche out here for Tundra. And Zayats is there. He's there perfectly to try to go for the save. Young BKB, Mantha still on cooldown. The double roots. You see the Gleipner coming in. He's able to cover. So much control, and yeah, Age of Cheese, Refresher Shard. Oh, who's taking the Refresher Shard? Who do you want this on? Usually it's the Phoenix, but yep. let's see if he does opt to pass it to somebody yeah, very else. Very close to hitting the level 18 as well, so the Supernovas have the potential to be huge. And they oh, they have this ward up top too. Rezo, there's a Hex. There's nine again. They've got the chainstone. Finding the opening, in with the rebound as well. Toss back with the Dispose. They take him down before the Hex oh, comes to an end, and any opportunities there for resolution to respond. He's oh. out for 70, he does have buyback himself. Still though, 10 seconds without Nisha. Tundra, they're straight down the mid, they take out the range racks, and they'll look to get the melee racks as well. Chrysalis trying to force them away from him, but they don't Crystal care about him. In fact, they're just gonna get aggressive on him, drag him back in. He has to put the BKB here. As the Phantasms continue to take down the melee ranks, the full set now in the mid, Radiant's removed here by Tundra, and they're sticking around. Nine up towards the top of the Tempest double. They're trying their best to force out this buyback from Resolution. Another tier three is gone. A second set of ranks exposed. Look how fast it dies. Are they going to be forced back at all? Fortifications pop. Zinisha. 
on top of the temple is double. It's going to come to an end. And he should be caught by the Southern Star Wars. It's there. Dyer's able to bail all the Isha out. That initiation there from Tundra. Nisha wants the beacon. He looks towards Santa. But Santa wants the beacon. He turns towards Crystalis. Disposes there. Crystalis is down. No buyback for him. As a hundred seconds now without their Bristol Rezo, his own BKB to come to an end. He has to back off. Nisha's also going to be so careful. They'll lose Puppy. Two heroes dead. No buyback on them. Tundra, they take a full second set of barracks. They're just so good at just resetting and poking, forcing BKBs, forcing mistakes. Waiting for the perfect opportunity. I mean, they're not going back anywhere. No way. Snaking still has the refresher shard. They couldn't even touch the egg in that last fight. I mean, we see, you know, with it, so the purchases from Chrysalis, he did spend up. He's, he would have had buyback back in three seconds, but he's 700 gold short of it. And all gone. I mean, the way they kill those buildings is way too fast. I mean, the terrifying thing as well is indeed, yeah, Skeeter still with that Aegis, Snaking still with the refresher shot. There's no reason, no need for Tundra to back off. They're looking to close this game two out. And the tier fours fall. Secret. They'll look to smoke up. One final attempt to stop this push from Tundra, but the Ancient Fall is on fire. Rezo looks to jump in. Skeeter will drag back Resolution. Resolution trying to get the heal off with the Bloodstone. They'll keep him alive. The hand of God from Puppy will protect him for now. But the Ancient still dying here to the familiar secret. They're trying to push them back, but it's not going to be possible. GG is going to be called. Wow. As game two. Also going to Tundra, who now lead the series 2-0 to zero against Team Secret. I mean, I feel like the whole game kind of flips the script. Everything looking kind of even. Nine gets this hex. The Thank you very much, Slash. Yes, we'll see indeed. Our Tundra able to get the 3-0 sweep or a secret able to stop them in their tracks. First of all, though, before we get into the action, we've got some, some words behind the scenes from Puppy <laughs> during that last draft. They are afraid of your monkey, Remco. Feel the power. He remembers last game. But don't worry. New game. Oh, there we go. There, Puppy trying to sort of build spirits coming into this game three. As they, they need everything here, Secret to drop be able to turn things around against Tundra. Two games now where there's just been a point where it seems all over. Tundra has just been all over Secret, closing up the games as they wish. Here, this game three, indeed, as we talked about during the draft, a bit of a different approach from both teams. Much different. Yeah, Tundra absolutely trying to go completely different there. You know, obviously, Aoi mentioning that you know, cosmetics were a bit of an influence in terms of why Skeeter's running the Medusa in this match. But regardless, you've got to imagine they still pick it because they feel that it's going to have its strengths here. Something that other teams have not been able to find in any of the games so far here, this international. Yeah, they probably feel like it can get to the scaling point, but the laning phase could be incredibly difficult. This is a very oppressive lane that Secret does have down here. And Mirana, I mean, we've seen Snaking do fantastic work on it, but sometimes sometimes you just can't really protect these cards. There's a reason these like, Medusas and Clinks have not been picked too often. Their lanes can just get completely shut down. So let's see if Skeeter and Snaking are able to do it. Right away, we're seeing those immediate tangos. Four or five of them are being passed off to Skeeter. He's going to have to bring more down because of the harassment that's coming out. Of course, one thing that's going to be feeling good for Secret, we're seeing already some action from it here down bottom. Zayat's getting his hands on the Marcy this game. One of the stronger heroes from the tournament. They don't have the one of those heroes that really benefits the most off of the sidekick, though. Usually you do see, like, when Tundra does try to opt for it, they have, like, two or three heroes they can throw this sidekick onto. Not really many on Secret, where it's like, wow, amazing sidekick. Like, sure, the damage bonus on an Ember can be decent, but Naga Siren getting sidekicked up isn't really the best. So it's going to be more of just this ganking in Marcy in particular. And do you feel a bit more comfortable overall with Secret's uh, approach? You know, this game, Crystalis, playing what you could only describe sort of as a more traditional carry, right? It's not this Pudge or Bristol that's going to look to be forced to get involved at a, an earlier time. He can look to sort of take the game a bit more on his shoulders as a, as a harder carry as the Naga Siren in this game three. Yeah, I mean, eventually, like, he should be able to he, and eventually definitely take over the map, and they do have those elements to be able to push and abuse those side lanes. It's very, like, like 702 are saying, it's like the, the script has shifted completely. It almost looks like a Tundra draft on the secret side, except with the Silencer. So I could definitely see Crystalis perhaps get to that point, but let's see if he's able to with the pressure that comes out, because Tundra is set super oppressive. But looks like Skeeter, he's having a little bit of a rougher one. As we've seen, Snaking actually getting a lot of last hits in this lane. Six, because Skeeter's being pushed off a lot from the aggressiveness. I mean, that's you know, sort of something to be said there, at least Snaking making sure that not too much is getting missed from the both of them. Yeah. 
Obviously, it's up. Puppy, just gonna like to chase out Satcher a little bit. So we will be fine and into the trees. I mean, mid lane, this time round, having the Ember Spirit here for, for, for Nisha. I mean, what's sort of your thoughts on this hero? I mean, she cool. picked later on in the draft. Is this a game where Ember Spirit is gonna have the luxury of sort of darting around the team fights, or is there a few concerns for Nisha? Definitely some limited disables on the side of Tundra. He could it. He could have a spectacular game. However, Ember at this tournament has been having some difficulties, of course, kind of committing into fights. You kind of just run out of steam at some point, it feels like, on this hero lately. So we'll see what he's going to be able to make of it. Top. Saxa. Trying to trade with Puppy, but Chrysalis will step up, make sure the Saxa can't continue to stand his ground against the Silencer. Now we see the build, of course, from 33. It's Axe Max, but also just he started with the Sage's Mask straight into the Bass. He started some mangoes. It's a typical approach from from Tundra and just keeping the spam on me. She's top CS. And sort of a secret, you know, in terms of your we talked about how Tundra can deal with the mid secret. You know, for secret, how well are they going to be able to deal with Nine when he hits this point where he's coming in with those early rotations, heading to the side lane of the Rolling Thunder? Can they deal with the Pango's aggression? He could be big problems. I think we have to watch for these globals if he's able to catch it, like in between these rolls and stuff like that, how much Puppy's going to be able to do to catch this with the combination of Nisha. They do have burst damage to be able to just kill this Pango in some situations, so. Well, so far in the mid, Nisha. Decent bit of a lead here, 29 to 5 against the 21 and 2. Doing his best with a consistent slight spam here onto 9, keeping him low. Both kind of doing the same thing to each other, keeping each other just at gankable levels. And it's a bit scarier, I would say, for the Pango. He actually has to go back to base because there's a Marcy. So whenever you're getting put low, you always have to expect this rotation to come in. So we do see. Nine is forced back to base. Oh, we did see Zaj yeah, indeed step over to yeah. that area, see if that opportunity was going to be had. You say Nine plays it smart. As soon as he goes missing bottom, even for a couple seconds, they do have to be very wary of it. Thinking. He's got the trade. He's got two in Starstorm, too. It's true. Science does get too low. Dude, snaking will look to jump in and burst through him. Yeah, one or two more hits, and he would have probably been able to go for it. And looking at the bottom lane, it also was a bit of a slower start in the first few waves. Looks like Skeeter is able to pr pretty much catch back up here to him the amount of fun. Rezo's getting out of this 26 for 7, 23 for 6, and he's got this full wave coming in against him. I think Skeeter, you know, despite the early pressure on him, dealt very well with those first few waves, those first few lanes that they've had to match up against Secret down here. They've been Dyer's so good because of this Mirana, really. Like Snaking's attack. actually being able to Brett bully and make sure that Skeeter is able to have a decent laning phase because these two points in Star Storm is able to trade with pretty much anybody. And here we see this rotation coming in. He's already used this watch buckle. Six. And he has indeed hit the six. And Alamy nine. He's more than fine. In fact, trying to use that ult to set up a bit onto Nisha, but the remnants oh. are the ready. Nisha himself in the six. Nine's able to roll across, pick up that arcane rune. As Snaking and Sax are heading over to help, they'll jump over the rebound. And Zayats goes down. They'll even be able to turn over towards Nisha as well. But He's Nine fighting. will die for that effort. Maybe you're feeling a bit stronger than he was there, charging forward with the backup of his two supports. But Nine ending up losing his life off the back of that aggressive play. Right, Nisha does incredible physical damage right now. The corrosion and the blades of attack finished. So much damage, yeah. With Maybe three points in slide. Yeah, maybe thought he was going to be a little bit tankier, and immediately they rotate in Zayas, they fill up the bottle, so looking to play around Nisha as much as possible. So yeah, Secret showing that they can bring their supports mid as well. Sure that Nisha continues to have that edge in this mid matchup. Only about a 600 gold difference, a lead here for the Ember Spirit. Nisha playing it well so far. I mean, that, that, that tends to be in the decision there, so Secret, they're going to be like, okay, no longer can we really pressure the Deuce early game. We're just going to look to buff up this Ember Spirit so he can be the one to kind of take over the map. Since Naga's now having her own free time, they're just going to be like, all right, Rezo, you're sacked for the moment. We'll deal with this Medusa later on. Still keeping the Silencer even around the mid lane. Thirty-three. Looks like he'll give some of that top lane to Saxa. Thirty-three will start to clear a bit of the stacks. Prepared here in the triangle. Yep, he's got his helm creep finished up too. So now he can look to actually pressure the lane. Once he's got this creep, he can go back up there. What a lane! Making a bit of an effort onto Skeeter. Man, they're starting to get pretty low here. The arrow. Damage resides in resolution. Snaking on target though. Holds back Rezo. Limits the ability for Secret to continue to chase down Skeeter, but. We're seeing heavy pressure now from these two, and it's going to become even more secret. They're bringing in Nisha to make Skeeters. the aggressive play down. Eskida immediately out of the area, does not want to mess around when these sort of rotations come out from the mid. The earlier ward that's thinking placed for the to watch the rotations of the Marcy, actually this time catches the Ember Spirit, making the rotation down. So Skeeter, we've seen him actually last game did the same thing, got pushed out of lane relatively early. We'll go to jungle, and Snaking's going to sit in the trees and sap. And it's this 
timing again really for this eight to nine minute window where both games secret they have been allowed to, to get this early tier one tower so once again I've got some good pressure on at the moment, snaking. Same position here with last game. Sapping the XP that he can. Over and uh, see what's up with the, the map, though. Sax has got a bit of a catch on to Crystalis. He looks dead. Low. No, he's ready to jump in with the Rolling Thunder. That's Crystalis caught. So while Secret put the pressure on down bottom, Tundra make the most of that information to catch out Crystalis alone. It's so much pressure. As soon as the Dominator's finished up on the Beastmaster, he's shoving the lane in. They're looking to catch behind. And yeah, Saxa, he finds it. Even now going to take away some of this jungle, take away the bounty rune as well. And look at Snaking. It looks like he's potentially maybe trying to drag a wave or something. Yeah, maybe try to grab that, but unable to because he's getting chased. Does mean that they're not going to get the bottom tower on the side of Secret, and top tower is going to drop to the side of Tundra. And Snaking is just face making. Oh, and Les Rezo reads him. Nicely done there from Rezo. Zayt's having to jump in and throw Snaking back into the clutches of resolution. They'll get themselves a kill out of that secret. Oh, beautiful play from Rezo. I've seen Isha. He's diving in sort of pretty deep into Tundra's half of the map. Trying to really keep Skeeter on his toes, make sure this Medusa doesn't feel too safe to farm. Even this sort of deep area on their half. He's not really at risk of too much. Like, they have to bring so many heroes to kind of punish this Ember Spirit. So I really like the play from Nisha. He's just keeping this Medusa low, keeping him scared. Because if a plus one hero comes in, it's a free kill every time. And now, with this, potentially able to take this bottom tower point, put it to Edict. So we'll be able to match that move from Tundra up top. Two to two. Ten minutes in. Similar to sort of close start that we were getting at least out of the game two of this, this grand final. Radiance Secret very much having their own strengths. Fallen. Overall, though, see top of the board there, 33. He's making a, making the money on this Beastmaster. We've seen this from him a lot on his Beastmaster, especially being top net worth when it was when it was very popular. He was playing it so much. And we'll see now if there's going to be a play from Secret to look to invade the Ancient area, because that's kind of like the Medusa specialty is farming these Ancients. In the past, most games with Tundra, they actually don't do this for Skeeter, because he's usually playing with these Illusion heroes. So let's see if they are going to look to punish him. And sort of in comparison to the drafts that we have from Tundra in Game 1 and Game 2, would you sort of consider this this Game 3 one a little bit more vulnerable in these sort of early stages? Like Secret have a bit more of a chance of shutting them down early? Yeah, absolutely. Medusa just takes it takes some time before she wants to show up at all. So it does feel like they can look to be playing pretty aggressive, just have to really avoid Nine in particular. I mean, he's the big playmaker. If they can kind of Nisha. move away from the Pangolier. Let's see if he seizes the opportunity to go for Saxa. Sentry down though for Saxa now. He knows that... He's just watching him. Tough grab, though. And Nine is still I mean, really lingering in the back line. On he still wants to maybe do something. He's got so, quite the flank. He's a bit low on the mana as well. Went up too much to throw out here. There's the opening for Nine. Him with the Rolling Thunder. They'll pop the global. The creep takes the arrow. Stun. And he won't quite connect. And now Rezo tries to turn. But the global comes to an end. Saxa turns for the combo. Avalanche tries to take him down. Resolution falls. But Ty ends. He's fighting. The backup of Nisha. Secret. They'll be able to take something in return. Oh, no He's out with the sword, but he goes for the TP. But Nisha will be able to dive in with the Remnant. Pick up a couple, maybe more. Chains are up. He has enough mana to stop the TP from Saxa. Puppies here as well. They'll chase out the Ties. Surround him in the trees. It's a triple kill for Nisha. What a play. Skills up the, the Searing Chains after he gets the kills. Immediately has enough mana to do it too. Beautifully done. This is exactly what Secret need to be seeing from Nisha. They have to have him just step up to the next level, something that he has done before in some of the series here during the playoffs of TI. They and need Nisha to be on top form and have a chance against Tundra. And you see why they put so much emphasis on him in the mid lane, fill up his bottle, do everything you can to make sure Nisha has this game so he can make that space for this Naga Siren who now, yeah, Crystalis free in the jungle and they have a regen rune sitting bottom. So Zayat, he's camping it for Nisha so he can keep his impact on the map. All about this Amber Spirit for Secret. Skeeter, feeling confident enough to step up in the mid. Secret, they'll never scary place. To jump on this. They'll get him with the opening. They've taken out his mana. The damage has been done. A Ooh. risky position for Skeeter to, to find himself <laughs> in. Secret, they they don't hold back at all at making that jump. They know that that Medusa is in a completely dangerous spot. And it hurts. That's Skeeter out of the game for 20 seconds. Secret, they managed to put some pressure on the mid. And of course, this is just continued gold and XP being fueled and funneled into this Ember Spirit. Stone has the regen running, so he's full HP, full mana for this push. They can still have to fight if anyone does come in. And Tundra doesn't feel like they do want to fight here dropping too fast. 
big moves. I'll have to let this one go. And tons of space. Crystal is now able to rotate down toward bottom. I mean, nine. He's sort of keeping his eyes on Chrysalis, but of course, in this area, out on his own. He's not able to sort of make any sort of move or aggressive play. At least not until he has the Diffusal Blade done. When that is there, he might be able to look for some solo action. I was looking to see if we would see that build uh, queued up also for Crystalis, because I believe Notel was mentioning, I think it was... I think it was Hector who did it, actually, in one of the games as Naga when he was playing. And he went with the Fusal Blade, and it was very strong. So if he can, opt to do that, if I they think, even want I think to. Well, I think the thing is, though, to. do they even want to, though? Because, like, the Medusa, maybe they don't feel like they even need it. I mean, how little this hero's been played. You might sort of see the argument for just getting that Scarlet as soon as you can. Of course, yeah. is going to have incredible benefits from limiting the Medusa in these fights. Secret, this time around, really finding yeah. their footing. Now for Tundra, playing around 33 is probably the best option. Helm of Overlord is finished, so it is a big problem for Secret. Resolution's pretty vulnerable. As 33 opens up with a raw easy kill there for Tundra. That's the big hero that they do have to watch out for. And yeah, snaking with these Moonlight Shadows, this has kind of been one of the biggest things that Tundra's been able to play around. Yeah, you gotta watch out for the Samper Spirit next fight. He's got his Maelstrom done and a TD in the bottle. Oh boy. You don't want to fight around this Amber unless you're guaranteed to have the lockdown. And of course, this is a point where Raw has been used. Nisha is gonna be able to play with that timing in mind. Not too much that he has to threat when he turns up these team fights. And there's Global available too, so even if the Chain Stun comes out, like Socks up by an Avalanche, the they can probably count on He's ready to go in change, There's followed global. by the Global Silence. See the Rana, Snakey try and get off to the side, but the Slight's there. They take down both supports. And they might even get the help. They will. I should turn your 50 guard, believe, go in the way of Resolution, so more money for him. I'll speed up the Bloodstone. Really is, you know, Saw. Should being able to step it up a bit more in Game 2, but here in this Game 3, his Ember Spirit so far, so good here with these early plays. And he's sort of on towards the level 12. Once he gets that item done after the Maelstrom, we'll see what it's going to be if he feels he needs to get the BKB, play some sort of sort of into, into some sort of safety for the next item. But at the same time, as we say, we sort of lack of lockdown. He, he might not need it. He can just build yeah. up that damage, continue to play aggressive. I think he probably wants to look to play as aggressive as possible. The space for Crystalis is amazing right now. He's just having the time of his life on this Naga Siren. 2k lead. And Secret, they're still clustered together. The lanes are all in a good position for them, so they can just keep looking to fight. Even though they don't have global. This really around came. Them in. Another catch here from Nishri. He's in with a slight change. Oh. Bring it off to the side. They get the dispose back on the Saxon. But Sides and Puppy just gets shredded by 33 and his dinosaur. As Tundra, so they're ready to see if they can catch more snakes. He's in with the arrow. Quick turn the slight chains. Leash is just able to take him out. Folks, because of Tundra, wow. they continue to get more. Nine rolls in, takes out Reza. He's got his eyes over towards Leash. It's pretty deep here. Up towards the tier two, they'll continue to try and chase him. Chains back up. Well, Leash is starting to sort of dig there. A bit risky. He's going to get caught with the other one. Oh goes down. Oh. As Tundra, they hit back hard. Straight down the man. They take out four. And now Secret, they're looking for the fight. They're like, we don't have global, but we don't really care. We can still look to get this, but an avalanche from the high ground, I think catches, what, three heroes? Axes as well from the Beastmaster, catches multiple. Tundra in position perfectly to counteract Secret. Yeah, as we've seen time and time again for Tundra this series, they know when to go. You give them any sort of opening, and they just go straight for it. And both supports taken out, and then they know it's their time to resist. This tier two starting to fall. Tundra they're sticking around here on the aggressive against Secret. Puppy does have the global up. They have to try to take out this 33 Beastmaster, Beastmaster somehow. He's doing way too much damage. Christos is still getting all the space in the world, but that is a pretty devastating hit, losing Nisha like that. Now, so we're going to get to see you know, Chrysalis have an impact this game that he just hasn't had in the series so far. Sure. Both Game 1 and Game 2, he just never really got the farm. Pretty much stuffed at the bottom of the cores. It will be a different story this time. So Chrysalis will absolutely feel a bit more powerful when those inevitable team fights occur that he has to turn up to. That being said also, though, Skeeter has started to get ignored a little bit because of the moves Tundra's been able to counteract for Secret. He's got Manta. Now he can freely push out those waves without having to show his face. He can actually survive in most situations. That's so. very true. I mean, Secret's as you said, hard. on the Medusa, you're always going to have a tougher time opening up in this sort of game. And Skeeter, arguably, he's got through that tough spot. He got through one of the tougher ones. And he's always going to have excellent Ma Mystic Snake targets. You just throw that onto the flesh in most situations. You get so much mana back in the fights. Secret, have to be careful in these next few moments. Can't make another mistake like that. 
Gonna smoke up. Nisha's still having quite a bit of gold in the bank. 2,600. See snaking poke of the wave mid, but Dyer's they want something down. much bigger He's than that. They want attack. 33's life. This is the best kill Let's they can find right now. See if they can blow right him up here with a combo. Straight in, but already 33's off the side. They find the chain. Sox is here. Help out. Rolls back up. They turn with the roar. Onto resolution. Holding back the less track. They'll turn his attention over towards Saxer instead. Here comes Peter. They want to look to try and take this fight. Nine rolls up straight up the high ground. He's got the opening stun on the resolution. The roll continues, of course, through the song as Resolution's taken out. Tonight, he's ready to close it on Chrysalis as the song comes to an end. Illusion's back out for Chrysalis, snaking. John Shaw for the Star Storm, trying to burst secret down low. The curse kicks in on to nine, so no further spells available to be casted on the chase. But now Roche. Resolution's gone. 33 as strong as ever, steps over into the Roshan pit. They were so close to maybe catching 33 by surprise, but they couldn't quite find the initiation off the back of the rebound. They waited. So they're trying to poke at them here, secret. Sort of deter Tundra from committing to the Roshan, but it's, it's rough. They waited a little too long, it felt like on the Global. Every spell got casted, and then Global comes out. The Roar and the Avalanche was already there to kind of let the, let 33 get the distance. So, Secret, again, they have to be careful with these mistakes. It's going to get punished every single time. Tundra is all at the ready to look for Ooh. these fights, and now... With Skeeter at the ready to fight, they're going to look for their own battle oh, with 4 or 5. Skeeter's ready to join, and he's got a point in the Stone Gaze as well. So ready to pop that ultimate. Stop a secret from being able to Sox. sort of take the fight head into the... Sox has got Blink. He's in with a jump. He gets the toss back. They'll get the quick pick onto Puppy. Puppy gets burst through. Rebounding from Zion. So to watch Saxa. The Stone Gaze has been popped here, so secret they can't come in him for now. Ooh! Rezo's going to end up tanking the roll out the back of one of the illusions. Rezo's going to attempt to run down Tundra with this in mind, but off to the back lines, nine. Straight in, on top of Zayas, controlling the Mars. He good bounces here, off the cliffs. Leaving Zayas, no one to escape. Nine takes him out, pretty much solo. Jumps over the swipe buckle. Stun will connect, though, at nine. He's falling low. Nisha has the damage. They take down nine. Can they chase for more? But the curse on the 33, Rezo. Pops the Bloodstone, getting that mana back up. He's ready to chase. He's closing the ammo to the Beast Master. He's going to be another for secret. Triple kill Big for Nisha. Only Skeeter and Saxa left here for Tundra. Saxa, he still wants to fight. Jumps in with the top. The avalanche under the three of them. They've taken out resolution. There's going to be a buyback from Zyas. Secret, they're putting everything into holding this fight. Keeping Crystalis safe. Nisha, the dragon. he's so low on mana. He hasn't really got much more. He's still trapped up on the high ground. He's got one more slide of He's fish. burning. But Skeeter, he's, he's burning. Off the burn for the dragon. 33. Kills him off, Skeeto will, will surely die here. Can they really get him out? Oh, but they're, they're, they're going to get him out. Is he really going to get, get him away? Out. They can't close the gap. Skeeto's oh, going to oh live. God. He's going to live. Oh, Nisha, he gets stuck in that little spot on and the, the ledge. And the, the dragon, the bird, he feels it there. And the whole fight, He's too. Stuck. A fight that lasts, I mean, what feels like almost two minutes. The Hawk is scouting everything in all these situations, too. Tundra. Amazing at the way that they can reset from these fights. But Secret, they do get some big kills. I mean, yeah, more. No, sure. Nisha dying at the end of it. I mean, look at his case. 10 2 and 2. He's still doing everything he can here to hold on to this game against Tundra. But He's in got... these fights, Tundra's still able to take to the, to sort of the next level once again in this game three. I mean, look at the start, too. The arrow does connect on the Naga. They're almost able to get the roar, but 33 unable to get it. It's the start there. I right, crazy chases. I mean, Skeeter being able to walk away as he did. Uh, right. Definitely going to feel frustrating there for Secret. I mean, the way that they're able, just the reset, the constant reset and jump forward, the way they play around these cooldowns. Soxa, how many avalanche toss combos was he able to get in this one? How many axes did you see thrown out? We'll see Skeeter about 2,300 gold away from the Scardi. If they couldn't kill him easily enough then, once he's got his next item done, he's going to be such a huge terror in these team fights. Crystalis too, though. Still getting big. The Orchid is finished, so he also has a level of control, perhaps. A Tundra. To catch this Pango. They're ready to make the move. They know Roshan's up. They don't want to head straight into the pit. They want to try and get a pick off first. Secret relatively prepared, though. The fourth and group top. Rezo, the one to be into the pit. They want to try and get a pick off first. Secret relatively prepared, though. The fourth and group top. Rezo, the one to be pushing out alone. TP on cooldown for nine seconds. We'll see if he's able to get out of this area of the map in time. They always have the Hawk scouting out, trying to get information. If they get the initiation onto one of the big heroes of Secret, it's going to be a really tough comeback. Even though they have Global, one of those heroes will probably die instantly if Tundra does get that jump. I mean, we see sort of from Secret as well. They, you know, Skeeter pushing out the mid lane as kind of aggressively as he was over on Secret's half of the map. Secret, they suspect that something's up. 
It's it's so keeping together and, and now, you know, sort of keeping the timing in mind, knowing that the smoke from Tundra's probably come to an end. Dyer's they might try and sneak a Roshan off the back of their own smoke though, rather than look for a kill. They're straight into the pit. 33 shows bottom. They know that they've got a bit of space to go for this. The question is, can they do it fast enough? And it looks like they do with the unleash. It's about to drop down. Tundra do have the split push coming on, but yeah, this rush is That's a big move for Secret. A smart timing there with the smoke. Now Rezo probably feels a lot safer. He can charge in, almost BKB done. He's gonna be able to commit into those back lines easier. Secret find themselves a pretty big window here. See what sort of the play is to be here from Tundra. A bit of a different position to what they've been in before in the, the first two games. You know, Secret having this first Aegis on resolution. And for the most part, very much has been the core that Tundra has struggled the least with taking down. Now he's got that Aegis. Tundra, they're gonna have to think twice about how they go about these team fights. They're still going to try for it though. They're in with a puppy shot. Nine. Oh, first onto puppy. What's that? Have caught out the pack of it. Off the side to be caught by the roar. Thirty three commits straight down. Takes out Zayats, but Nisha's Nisha. in. That's nine out of the fight, and Nisha crystallized. They're in for more. Diving over to one Saxon with the remnant. Saxon tried to toss it back, but with the axe, Nisha, he's still got remnants to play with. Closes the gap. Two more kills for the Ember Spirit. Nisha now up to twelve kills here. Twenty four minutes in. They get the initiation onto the two supports, but Nisha, Secret, they're all there at the ready. Yeah, this Agonims saved the gold, got the, got those big kills earlier, finished yeah. it up, another 3,000 gold for him too. I mean, he's getting to play exactly the game as you, so, you know, sort of expect him to be able to in this sort of draft. Limited he's control. He's playing it perfectly. Nearly hitting level 18. He's got 3k gold in the gap, but in the bank, ready towards his next item. And Crystalis is he's starting. A problem. Crystalis is starting to get toward critical mass as well. Heart almost finished up. So, will it catch him? The they roar. Got the roar. Do they have enough? And, and it's the Hawks crashing down onto him. It's a little bit more, but not enough. Nisha still able to get away. I mean, looking enough for him. 33 hadn't quite picked up the Hex. Next time around, the Hex, it will be there. 33's got it done. But they just, I mean, this fight, they just get the perfect wrap run. They stick on Chris, and nobody helps. He gets a global to kind of cover him, but nobody else is able to actually get him into a better position. I mean, it, it they full focus him. It, it very much was a case of uh, just biting off a bit more than they could chew. You see, so sort of the plan here from Nisha, he wants to jump to the back lines, try and look for the easier kills, uh, and then off to the side, sort of this heavy attempt from Secret to, to sort of commit it. And, and try and help out Reza, you know, get this kill on Saxa. All this sort of split focus means that Crystalis, he's got no help at all. No help whatsoever. And they do have enough damage. If they're able to stick on him like that, Radiant they will always have enough damage to deal with this Naga Siren. Tundra now 4k lead. Right after we're saying that yep. perhaps they could have some struggle, they I find a beautiful angle. And now, you said, the Hex is also finished up for 33. So, so for Nisha, he's actually got a much harder game in front of him. He's got to be careful. I mean, he's got a little bit of protection, of course, with the status resist. But the guy is now just going to try to get the Lincolns off next. Uh -oh. In the mid, they're going to toss back into the arrow, into the Hex. They're looking down. Nisha's gone. Oh, boy. They Instant have smoke. the power to deal with him right now. They're feeling themselves. Instant smoke. The roar is still available. They want more. 70 seconds. He just spent the gold. I mean, you know, Secret, they definitely are going to be feeling it after the outcome of that last fight. They know that Tundra's got this lead against them. And there's got to be sort of that really concerning feeling just sort of deep in their gut. When you get behind Tundra, you struggle immensely to get a hold back at the game. It's something that teams throughout the entire TI have struggled to do. Trying to turn around against the lead at this point, against this squad. Only very few have even come close to being able to do so. Secret, they've got to do something miraculous to hold on to this game. It's a huge death, too. Such a long time. The Ember Spirit off the map. You can see Secret's kind of stuck in their base. Crystalis is really being I mean, pretty, pretty uh, aggressive being down here. He can even get caught pretty Radiant's easily if there's just like a hawk scouting him. So he's really pushing the limit of his hero down here. And Roche, it's going to get scouted instantly. It's going to spawn, and they'll have a small window to actually go for it. I don't know if Secret's going to want to do anything about this whilst they don't have Nisha. It's going to die so fast yeah, as well. It really will. With, the, with nine. As all that minus armor. And Secret, you know, out of all the heroes, Amber Spear may be one of the ones that could have gone for some sort of aggressive dive in to try and look for a steal. It the dies too fast. Them, it's so, so hard to do. Of course, Outpost under Tundra's control, so no real easy way for Nisha to get over here in time. Roshan gets taken ages into the hands of Skeeter. And Secret, and they may have come too close to the pit already. They jump on a puppy. They're the Eondis. No, in with the roll. He's done the locking puppy down across the stairs. Puppy falls. And Zayats, he's got to run. Oh, he'll miss there. Protect him from that first instance of the Scarly attack. And Zayats, he's still got no chance of running. Oh, and Rezo. He's out of close. Oh, Rezo gets the toss back. Oh, 
take the rose, they take the ages, they take three more kills from Secret. It's the way that, I mean, they're fighting the Roche, right? They're killing it. They're like, oh, we got this. So they Moonlight Shadow, run out, and go for catch while they're doing the Roche on hype. Tundra just on another level every single time. The way they take every single approach, every single fight. Yeah, Secret starting to crumble a little bit once more. They've got to pull themselves together. But how now? Skitter, he's now he's the one full critical mass. The Mjolnir is done. He's got Shard. I mean, at the least, the Crystalis on the Naga side, if you continue to do this, keep some of these lanes, split push out, cut the creep waves, limit the areas that Tundra's able to push in on, but already this top lane is hitting the tier threes. Tundra, they're gonna look to try and push on a high ground here. And the big issue really for Crystalis is when is, he, when is he gonna be able to feel strong enough to get into a fight himself and do what needs to do? He's one, three, and two on this Naga. He's trying to sure, get the axe here to yeah. sort of have that extra setup, but... Will it be enough? Is it gonna give him damage to actually walk into these fights? It doesn't feel like a Tundra. They've, they've covered all their bases. And they're so strong now around this push. Three minutes still on the Aegis. So much time to play with. Where they can look to take so much from Secret. Rex, it's just dropping for free. Nobody wants to step up. They're scared of getting tossed. He's got the eggs. Jackson! He's in with the combo, they catch side, sound on the side, the arrow connects as well, Swashbuckle won't quite clip him, neither will the axes, but nine, in with the rolling thunder, finishes off science, over towards Chrysalis now, the global silence, holding back Tundra's aggression for now. But they're not able to make anything of that global. Secret, we'll keep that distance, throughout the remainder of this rolling thunder from nine, 30 seconds without their Zayas Marcy. Now they're taunts. Zaxa, the set of down to Chrysalis, the and then the, the pull of X as well, he's been locked down, they've got to get Chrysalis back to safety. He's walking back to the fountain, they'll be able to allow Chrysalis to reset, but the damage is done, the racks have been taken out, Rezo, he tries to come in, but he gets too close, rolls up, oh, Rezo's shit. out for 17, no buyback for the last track. They can't kill anybody, they they're can't. in the global, they're just on full retreat, secret. It's starting to look impossible. It just, it just doesn't stop it from Tundra. Once they've got a hold on the, the game, it's just this immensely tight grip. You cannot, you cannot stop them. 12K lead. All it takes is one fight, really, from Tundra. We saw 28 minutes, right? Things yep. were kind of even, and then kaboom. They find absolutely everything they needed. And now Secret, they're pretty trapped. They've got the Lincolns now for an Easter, but as we said, where's the damage going to be coming from? Everyone on Tundra is feeling a bit too tanky with all these new items coming out. And just, you know, as, as always, you've got to really point back to sort of how impressive it is for Tundra. They do with this last pick, Methusa, something yep. that no one else was doing. Something that was, out by the sounds of it from Al, he sort of picked on a bit of a whim. Skeeter, he got the new Crimson Witness for it. He wanted to play it. It's looking pretty darn fantastic. It's it's up there at the top. And they see Nisha. And they get that opening. They got the chase done. The stun. global's going to be born. Can he get him out of time? They can't. The lockdown's there. He spent his gold on the Lincolns. Oh, he's out for 80 and Zayas. Also found Secret, they are crumbling, falling apart once again in this game three. Tundra, they just know how to break you. And they just know how to play with this vision, right? The Hawk this time around, it always seems to be scouting. Radiant's courier has been killed. I believe they also now, that was the gem that they just picked up, gave to Nisha, and he didn't last with it for very long. Now it's on the Beastmaster. A full refresher, also, this Beastmaster. 33, a menace this game, 12, 1, and 16. Oh my goodness. I mean, there's so much pressure. Look on at Crystalis thinking. right now to just try and keep this game going. Resolution as well. They're, they're doing everything in their power here. Secret to just cut these waves, push them back out. Good, good call there with the BKB CP out. That BKB didn't come. Resolution was dead for sure. He gets himself back to base. Secret, they're trying the best to prolong the game. Buy time for Nisha to get back in. And that will certainly be the case. He'll be back up in 30. So Secret, at the least, despite this incredible lead that Tundra's starting to grow against them, they were able to hold them off, give themselves another chance. But each and every time, that chance becomes slimmer and slimmer. I mean, the rapier is queued up for Nisha. He's really he starting to feel it. And, I mean, Chrysalis, he's got the Bloodthorn queued up. Perhaps this could be some solution to be able to focus fire some targets, but He's got Tundra, a lot of money towards it. He does. Tundra just, they, they're, they're just playing so well off each other, protecting each other with Lotus Orbs, four stabs, etc. They have so many, nine snaking both with those Lotus Orbs. So even if someone does get focus fired either from a net or from that Bloodthorn, they'll have ways to bail them out, as we've seen them do time and time again. And now, their base, right? The base is just being shoved in constantly. Tundra, always going to be able to shove those lanes in. So much damage. Time with the Bloodthorn, the aggressive, you know, the offensive items, the defensive items, the Lotus ready to bail, skeeter out any dangerous spots. 
They have everything Dyer's to just sort of empower this Medusa, allow Skeeter to just enter the front of the fight. And it will be so, so tough for Secret to take Skeeter down at this stage. And they're even starting to get, you know, these tier 4 neutral items, so Global starts to get addressed as well. All these dispels, Tundra continue to stay as a unit. Secret the continue to be trapped. Puppy. Just gonna try and come out, maybe get a bit of vision, get a bit of information. To take the outpost oh, 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 back, or at least tease with the idea. The risky. take us. Still, oh, a little smoke. Oh, do they see it? Someone pings. I mean, they, they want the bigger target. They've got themselves on top of Nisha. Uh oh, he jumps left. They're pinging it. I mean, his, his TP's on cooldown. That was put to a stop there by the jump of Saxon. So he has to make his way back to the base it's with a, a few remnants. But of course, he's still got many to play with with that Aghanim. So he'll be fine. Secret able to get everyone back to the base. But indeed, Global's down. Maybe a bit of an opportunity for Tundra to once again try and take this game to the next step. Look to push down for a, another set of barracks. We'll see how much they want to force it. I think they're I think they're kind of on chill mode until Skeeter hits 25. If someone walks into them, they can look for the fight, but Skeeter, it unlocks a whole new potential of the hero when you hit 25 on this Dusa, especially versus this Naga. I mean, it's true. And sort of the big thing that's standing out as well is just sort of the levels. You know, Tundra, they able to get so much XP from the map of these kills. Skeeter just about to hit level 25. Yep. Meanwhile, for Chrysalis, of course, all of his farms pretty much done by the illusions, split pushing out the map, still stuck on level 19. Still a ways to go before he's really going to be feeling in a position to be able to stand his ground against the cause of Tundra in the team fight. And a ways to go, really. Zayats, you know, he was getting close to BKB, what, 12 minutes ago or something? He still doesn't even have it done, so. The scaling for them has completely stagnated. While for Tundra, it feels like all of them are scaling more and more with these small little items to protect each other. Not really sort of any easy target that, even with the BKB on Zayats, that he can sort of just commit in on with the Unleash. No. They've got ways to kite him out. Zax has got the items, Blinks, Forces, Yules. And multiple ways to get that dispel, as we see. Witch Bane's done, or Witch Bane's picked up from the Medusa, and they did, I believe, have the Stormcraft on the Tiny, so yeah, ways to just reset away constantly, which has been Kind of the bread and butter for Tundra. Resetting, retaking fights over and over again. And 25 now. Dusa, Skeeter, he's got the talent. So they're ready for their fights if anything comes to them. Playing it safe probably though. Final game perhaps for them. Playing around this Roshan timer, it's soon to spawn. Uh, that's, that, that's it, exactly. They can taste that victory. Yep. They know how close they are to claiming that Aegis of Champions. Every single time we see Tundra take the safest route out. They do not let these leads slip, slip away. And they're going to do everything to make sure that nothing changes from that in this all-important game three. It's got to be frustrating for Secret at this point, knowing that they can't make any move outside, but at the same time also, if they give up the Roshan, they probably just know that there's no way for them to bring down this Medusa twice. So the big item pickups that they are going to require is Chrysalis. And he's next item done. He's going to be opted for the Nullify after okay. Thorn. so some further aggressive sort of setup that they can play with. Hard for him still just committing into these fights at this point. Tundra just has so much to deal with him. Radiant. Oh, with the smoke. They try to get in there with the jump on a 33. See if they can take down this big before we get in the roll. They're on top of the 33. He's having the BKP on 33. They turn Skeeter. It's oh, too oh, much oh. damage from the Medusa. Nisha jumps in. We'll be able to finish on 33 and return. And we'll see the buyback coming straight away from Resolution 9. He's got him pretty deep here to try and chase down Puppy. Still with a bit of time there for the Rolling Thunder over with Resolution. Resolution did buy back for this. He's able to sidestep the Iron Tide. Nine out for the Swashbuckle. Secret that looks to chase, but the pick there before the Slide Fist connects. He's out to safety. Nine. Now he wants to back in. Saxa in with the toss. Go on the side. This is Robin Long. Down Nisha. Oh Nisha. Out for 100. As Tundra. They'll chase him now. Rezo. God without buyback. It's only Puppy and Grizzly. And the arrow. The arrow's there. Tundra catch him out. They're ready to run down There's a lack of buybacks on Secret. Secret felt the need. They had to chase to try to get more of the Beastmasters dead, but they get hit with an no onslaught. Buyback. No buyback on Resolution. And Nisha, he's 200 gold short. Oh. It's Tundra. They're going to try to get some ramp. They're going to Tundra. Some sort of surprise, but it's two against four. Dyer's middle back. As this push is not stopping. Tier 4 is dropping. They've got Secret. a fortification, but still such a long time without resolution, without Nisha, a full minute. And the creeps are coming in top. They can't even cut the waves. As the Tier 4s, Tundra, they're pushing on. Secret, they've got to make their move now. It's going to be now or never if they want to try and stop Tundra. 
They're going to just run in. And they've got to do something. The edge is just dropping. Dundra, they're looking to end inside. Jumps in, but immediately to his death. Crystalis has got the illusions out, but he's surrounded. Taken out, the Ancient is exposed. They're looking for the game. Tundra, they're on the Ancient, they'll be a buyback for Crystalis, but surely there's nothing. He's just getting control. to be done here from Secret as Tundra. They're closing it up. The Ancient, it falls. It's a oh my god. Tundra have done it. The 3-0 clean sweep today against Team Secret here in the grand final. What an unbelievable storyline. Undefeated. Tundra, unbelievable. And the way they did it, it truly feels like both this team, they've, they, they've cracked the code, they've solved Dota. They broke They're it. They approach every single time. They are unstoppable. Even when they get their heroes taken away, they always have some type of substitution. Every single player piggybacking off of each other. Go. Unbelievable. Snake it. Snake it. Skeeter. Nine. 20, 26 teams in 10 years, and he finally claims it. Incredible moments here. As you said, a team that's worked so hard throughout the year. They've had their highs, they've had their lows, but they come in at their best when it matters the most here at the International Fall. Last year, they weren't able to make it this year. They proved everybody, they proved to everyone how good they truly are. It's incredible play across the board. Some of these players, you've seen them time and time again over the years, as you said through different teams. I mean, a lot of them individually, the, the other pros, they've always known that these players, they've had it in them. They've had it in them to get this far, and not only get this far, but to completely crush their opponents in this grand final. Secret, they got closer and closer from game one to game three, but it was never close enough. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for Tundra. Snaking, the lost son of Salamene and his last hero. Any words for everyone out there? You've been waiting so long. It is all yours, buddy. I want to thank everyone for coming here and supporting us and watching this grand final. We wouldn't be here without you guys. Woo! Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. And, and I want to give a special shout out to Pierre and all the people who have supported me along the way. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, an incredible show. Well done, well done. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Skeet God here, my friend. Good to see you. I'm sorry, I'm caught up in the moment. Now you heard about Dota from TI2. You watched them on this stage. Well, now you've broken the records. Now you're on the stage. How does it feel, my friend? It's, uh, it's surreal, I don't know. I'm trying to like still digest the, all the emotions. You know, it's, it didn't really come to me yet, but it's fucking crazy. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Skeeter! <laughs> Hello, my friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, soak that in. This is your first TI. Any advice out there to anybody who wants to do what you just did? Because you just became the inspiration to an unknown amount of people that will always be looking at you, the man who made it happen. What do you have to say to the future of the Dota 2 fans? Get good. Get good! Okay. I need this man if you can. Thank you so much. Sashka. It has been six years. Yep. You came in second place last time. I know you've been dreaming of this moment. Tell me, how does it feel now that you have accomplished it? I mean, it doesn't feel like it's still real. Like, I'm still trying to understand what just happened. So it's like, I don't know. In my mind, it's like, I can't even believe it still. Oh, okay. Uh, audience, this is real! <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations, my friend. Where's the last one? Brea made the 33. Where'd he go? Hey, you get over here, sir. You've earned it. Many consider the VIP of the tournament, the MVP of the tournament, if you will. Third.
33. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up! You said many times before you were searching for the right team to make your Dota ideas be true. You were looking for the right squad to make it happen. It seems you found it, sir. Any words that you'd like to say to your teammates and everybody watching at home? I'm just so happy. Everyone did such an amazing job this tournament, and it's the best feeling. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for Tundra! You're winners of the International, baby! One of the best years of Dota that we have ever seen. The greatest lift of the ages. One more time. Give it to the fans. Incredible Dota! One more if you can! Here we go! And get together! Lift it up! Tundra Esports! Congratulations, Tundra Esports, head and shoulders above the rest. I do not believe I've seen such a dominating performance in all the TIs. Snaking, 33, Saxka, Skidder, and Nine. And I love the fact, panel. Hello, panel. Hello. Hello, Hello. Tinker. Hello, Sheep. Hello, Lizard. I love the fact that they're all the family there with the players, came to support, lifting it, lifting the Aegis. What a moment. It was an, just an incredible run from Tundra, right? The fact that they haven't lost a series at all throughout this entire TI. They basically dictated how people should be playing Dota. They were miles ahead. Everyone was trying to chase and catch up as each series progressed, but no one could get to their level and yeah, a dominating 3-0. Oh, it's just a dream. It's just a dream of every single Dota player. Anyone that ever played this game remotely competitively, lifting up that age, is getting your name on the back. It's, yeah. 33, like a few years back, he's in my team flaming me for some stupid build. Here he is now, like, <laughs> just carrying the ages around. I don't know. I'm speechless. I'm so happy for them. Honestly, genuinely, like, listening to any of these players talk, they care so deeply for the game. Like, these are the guys you should always be rooting for to win and achieve their dreams and go as far as they want. Like, they deserve this from their mentality throughout the whole year how much they cared boot camping fully through the dpcs like they wanted this they wanted this and it actually finally paid off it has and i you know they say is you know is it a dream they're not sure you know they know it's real i'm sure it will have to sink in but this is the thing with you know you win a ti did you hear the crowd james i, I, know. I think it's pretty real <laughs> it is real but even at these moments you can see it's proof that hard work just pays off. Like, think about this team, the amount of work they've put in, like Sheep mentioned, like Lizard mentioned, they've gone through so much and they've been boot camping the entire time. They've gone through, like, the, like from being favorites in majors to crumbling out. And then being able to self-identify those problems, work on them, and then get to this T, I get to this run, it's just, again, it's one of the most memorable runs in just yeah. dominance. Yeah, you know what's cool is that, like, back when this team was signed by Tundra, like, Skidder got on their YouTube channel, talked about it, he said, I want to leave a legacy. I want to be remembered as one of the best in my role. Like, that was what he wanted, and he has proven it so hard. This entire event, this series, every single game, this guy is just miles ahead, playing his heroes to perfection into 100 million counters. It doesn't matter. He pushes his heroes to the max, and I'm just blown away. I'm so impressed, and I'm so happy. And here they are, walking off the red carpet with the Aegis, their names soon to be added. And of course, make sure you stick around because we will be having the winners on the late game. If you're in the arena, you will be able to hear more from our champions. And he, well he deserved. As as them. Look at him. <laughs> he's, so, he's a giant, he's so a cool. lovely walking giant. Yeah, Peer and Flax will be uh, hosting the late game, as mentioned. And I, I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait to hear from them. Uh, you know, once they kind of settle down, we'll see, you know, what they're really going to have to say about that, you know, best of. Well, it wasn't a best of, it was a best of five, but winning it in three games. Welcome back to the panel. We're here. I'm, I'm, we're just flabbergasted, honestly. There's never, I don't, I haven't seen a run so strong like this. They lost, I think, one map total. In, yeah, in the playoffs, they lost one game to, to Secret, and then in the group stage,